Hello and welcome to the Yggdrasil Podcast. I am your host, Reddit Tosker, and today I'm very happy to have Smotown with us again. Hello, Smotown. How you doing? Hi. Uh, really glad to be back. Um, thank you back. Thank you for having me back so soon, and uh, excited to talk some lore. <laughs> I'm very excited to talk some lore. How did you like the DLC overall, by the way? I noticed you didn't do a, a review on your channel. So, I think everyone knows I'm a bit of an Elden Ring glazer, so I obviously... <laughs> <laughs> really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, you're right. I didn't do a review on the channel um, mainly because I don't feel like I'm particularly good at doing them, video ones anyway. I gave my thoughts on Twitter and there I kind of um, you know gave it more or less a 10 out of 10. Uh, in general, I think it improved on a lot of things in the base game and I'm sure we'll, we'll discuss the details of that through this podcast, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. What about yourself? Oh, yeah. Easy, easy 10 out of 10. Um, I'd give it an 11 out of 10 if I could, but <laughs> there were there were things that bothered me. And uh, post the the DLC coming out, a lot of people seem to have problems with a couple of things, uh, which we'll mention, like Radon being the final boss. By the way, <laughs> I should pro I'll put on the title, I guess, that it's not going to be a spoiler free podcast, but the spoiler free. Time yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's over. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, the, the some people had some issues with the shadow tree fragments. Did you did you have an issue with either of those um, things, or or did you have any problems with it? Because that might be more interesting than, than us glazing it uh, for for yeah, half an which hour. I'm, I'm sure we will do. Um, so I I definitely think there are issues, and I think Zyostorm put it really well in his video. You can still think something's ten out of ten, but because we pay attention to these games so closely, we can definitely you know pick some holes in it while still loving it, and. I think what people are saying about the Scadu tree fragments can objectively be correct without me also having encountered any issues, which I didn't, because of the way I played the DLC. And I basically, before even doing any bosses in every area, both, you know, th I played it three times now, I'm on my fourth playthrough. Every time I've done it, I've just gone and done everything, explored every nook and cranny before I fight bosses. So by the nature of the way that I play it, I I didn't really notice it because I got the full upgrades just by virtue of me exploring the map. But there obviously are issues. At the end of the day, you know, from software wouldn't have changed, you know, the scaling um, had there not been any issues. And I think it's better now that you don't need to collect all of them to be, you know, pretty well powered up. Yeah. But I don't know how they would have implemented it better. Maybe what people are saying with the Golden Seed comparison, I think maybe you said that as well in your your video that if there was just more than you needed to get full you could have got it more casually exploring the map um but i do think having 50 and that 50 being your max definitely was maybe not the best choice um what were your thoughts on it well i mean obviously um i've always been pro dlcs having an upgrade system you know yeah. the, the issues that people are levying against this dlc that its rewards are not um fulfilling like there, there are people that are like, well, I don't want my enemies to drop, or or going and picking mm -hmm. up an item and finding a a upgrade material to a weapon that I've already got fully maxed because it's DLC and you're expected to be fully maxed. And I'm like, okay, but that's an issue that's been that's been prevalent throughout all the DLCs for from software games because they're all uh, yeah end game DLCs and you're yeah. you're expected to to have fully upgraded weapons. And so the reason that they're giving you those upgrade materials is, is if you've you know gone in a little under leveled or don't have the bell bearings, and people are like, well, it takes two seconds to get the bell bearings. The games aren't designed for you to just know where everything is, you know, like no, you, they're not built with the expectation that you are going to look everything up and know where the bear where the bell bearing is. You you might be expected to have a plus twenty five weapon when you go into the DLC, but they may not. They're, they're not expecting you to, to have the bell bearing necessarily. So you need a, a way to get your weapons upgraded since they're giving you new weapons to upgrade. Yeah, uh, I agree. And and also, they'll be keenly aware that there's a lot of new weapons in the DLC. And to be able to try them out, you're going to need an abundance of these smithing materials, mm. which is what I found in my first playthrough, where I tried maybe three or four of, of the new weapons. And it was great to have that massive uh, resource of smithing stones and yeah for me I, I don't know i didn't feel like the rewards weren't worth it because i like having smithing stones because i like upgrading all these different weapons and trying out different things and i just wonder what people would want for the rewards um 
I'm I'm not <laughs> sure either. I, I I'm not like I'm not like trying to be you know cheeky or anything. I just don't know right what people would want necessarily. Something um, I, I had recommended a long time ago before this DLC, when I was still harping on, I think I mentioned this to Zion Storm. I was I've been harping on about the the DLC should have an upgrade system or reward system. Yeah, um, yeah. And what I had recommended is maybe another tier of weapon upgrades. So instead of plus twenty five, it can go up to plus thirty, and new upgrade materials littered around the DLC area that um, you pick up only in the DLC area. And so, you know, that would that would put you back in the place where you were before, where you pick up an upgrade material. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I don't have the bell bearing. I don't know where the bell bearing is because I'm just getting into True. this DLC. True. Now I've got these upgrade yeah. materials. They're they're again as valuable mm -hmm. as they were before. Mm -hmm. um, and there's problems with it, like what if you have like a plus 30 weapon how are you going to pair to co-op to with a with people that are not in the dlc or don't have the dlc uh yeah. or, or pv or the pvp scene and now that we saw that in the shadow tree blessing system that just affects the shadowlands and only affects the shadowlands maybe, absolutely yeah. maybe we could yeah. do the same thing uh with the upgrade materials uh so that they the plus 30 weapon is effectively a plus 25 weapon Plus an oh yeah okay in other in any other yeah. circumstance other than you being in the Shadowlands. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea actually. The yeah, I, I can't I can't argue that. That would definitely add some more reward incentive. And I do think, again, just the way I played, I maybe didn't encounter these frustrations that other people have. I think maybe a lot of people went into the DLC with their plus twenty five, mm. and they just didn't change their weapon. Right. So obviously at that point it is quite boring. Just getting tons of upgrade materials. Whereas I was cycling in and out a lot of the new weapons. So maybe I didn't feel that frustration necessarily but the way that i look at it now is if you're starting a new game or a new character you've now got this area this new expansion area where you can go if you want to you know fill your boots with upgrade materials i think it's a great great thing for that yeah, and you can Just avoid it. you can avoid fair missoula you can afford avoid yeah. the fire giant if you wanted to exactly and and you don't need to bother with in the ball the the bell bearings till later on and you're you're gonna you get hundreds of materials <laughs> from the uh, the lands of shadow so it's good in that respect uh and maybe you like you say just coming in top level with your plus new game plus five character is not the greatest rewards but i think it adds a lot to the base game if you're starting a new character definitely i also play um pretty thoroughly so before i would tackle an area i'd be like all right did i explore everything outside the area yeah you know yeah. before i go to bellarat uh, yeah. Did I explore fully the gravesite plains and the little uh, the jail mini dungeon beneath it? And oh no, I can't cross that bridge because I think I should go to Bellarat first. But but uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah and 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 when you do it like that, yeah, you feel you feel pretty fulfilled. And it seemed tailor made for the way that I play, like like trying to carefully going going in little circles, uh, making sure I didn't uh, yeah. miss anything. And I was very yeah, I, I was very happy. <laughs> I mean, what I, I I've watched I watched your streams quite a lot, and yeah, you're definitely even more meticulous than I am. I'd say like I'm a I'm a ninety percent explorer, is what I'd say. It's hard to explain exactly what I mean. Yeah. In that I give each area a really good shake, but then I do the boss. Um, but I know that you're someone that combs every inch of it. I think for players like me and you, that's slightly different, but more or less the same. The we won't have noticed the scadow tree issue because mm. each fight I was going into naturally quite upgraded. I think. The first time I went against Rodan, and this was not even exploring all the map, like I say, maybe ninety percent. I was in about eighteen, so mm -hmm. I was, you know, good good position to to take him on. Um, but yeah, I I would I'd like to have maybe watched a playthrough of someone who found the system frustrating. I wonder how they engaged with the systems. Um, but I know that that was a big discussion the first week it came out. Yeah, that a lot of people were finding it too hard, and I think. They just i don't think they were engaging with it yeah that's the only thing that makes sense to me because i'm not a great elden ring player i am not and I, I reiterated this in my reviews and when people were talking about it but i didn't have too much of an issue with the dlc and i think that's just because of the way that i engaged with the scatter tree upgrade system basically I, I think that one of the reasons they they boosted how much it does early levels um they they boosted how much shadow tree upgrades give you mm -hmm. was that people weren't noticing how strong the shadow tree upgrades were they weren't doing the math yeah. in their head they weren't really uh they weren't seeing the the effects and so it's like all right well we need to boost the effects early on so that they notice just how big of an increase is because you do double damage uh well yeah yeah yeah, yeah you do double damage by the, by the time yeah, you by get the to, end, yeah. to the end of it yeah yeah i think you're right i think 
initially people thought it was just like a silly little buff like a minor buff mm-hmm. and yeah that that is that's totally whereas like it just it gets so compounded by the end that you are in a, a different league than when you started the Shadowlands. so i do think that was the the week one complaints was that but then we transitioned from the from the dlc being too hard to the scattered tree system is stupid because that is when people <laughs> realized what, what was what they were getting wrong essentially right i, I imagine that's what you saw as well in yeah. the discourse yeah you know a, a friend of mine told me that they would they went up to a shadow tree fragment and they saw a message in it and next to it and then there's like oh and the message was like oh this again useless or something something like that <laughs> uh <laughs> point down to the shadow tree uh fragment yeah. it's like oh yeah people are not appreciating how, how good these are I, I don't think they're they're when they do find them, they they don't think it's that important, and they're not they're not actively looking for them. And I think that Bandai Namco also thought that because they they released like a Steam thing soon after yeah. on Steam. It's like, all right, see these pot guys. You have to look for these pot. Get yeah. your Shadow Tree blessing <laughs> systems. Please get these guys. Yeah, please. They started posting oh. on Twitter Shadow Tree blessings. You need to, you need to use. <laughs> I know. Them. Oh my. Uh, yeah, that was it. Was wild to me. And um, yeah, again, I just didn't encounter it just the way I naturally experienced the game. But mm-hmm. that's not to say that these claim complaints aren't warranted about the way it's implemented. I'd say. Yeah. I, I don't know how they could have done a better job of communicating it or or anything yeah. I, I, for me it was quite clear they gave you a know, tutorial the first time you you pick one up yeah and, and you would think you, it was gonna... you would think that it that it, that tutorial would be more uh paid attention to since if you've gone through the whole game and you haven't seen a tutorial in like 50 yeah. hours and you see a new tutorial it's like oh to chuck you and like i better read it <laughs> yeah and but then maybe me and you are more just wired into the discourse because i remember you discussing this system after Miyazaki had talked about it months ago mm. so maybe we were all just aware of it more I don't I don't know how it all kind of um how it went all went down I'm not sure how they could have implemented it better yeah Th- there was a big pop-up and stuff I-, I don't know I guess it worked out for the best anyway because the online discourse got people to correct their their way of engaging with the content one thing on the other spectrum that was really weird and I saw a losery wall talking about it did you see the note in the forges that basically tells you how to kill the golems even though it's obvious the way to kill the golems is so obvious yeah. i did find that weird as well i i it's one of those things where when i read those messages at the time i was like why is this why is this necessary they got a big red gem in their back so yeah find kind of two weird examples of the tutorializing by from software there was weird i i don't know i have to be i have to assume this this is like the result of some kind of focus group thing yeah and then you know they saw they saw some guy just whacking at the dude and not hitting the gem <laughs> yeah, in the just, back and and yeah uh, <clears throat> decided now we, got, we gotta we gotta do something something has to be done um Please. i hope they don't <laughs> I, I hope they don't go in that direction i hope they don't uh they don't think that that's a good idea like fine, yeah, it was fine. wildly unnecessary <laughs> yeah wildly unnecessary strange stuff okay but yeah what, what that, it, that's that that's all. That's all my thoughts on it. I thought it was well implemented. I didn't really understand the uh, the issues. Right, sure. right. Uh, what about the other big complaint, uh, Radon, as as the final boss? I think the way again, not to glaze your content now, but the way you put it um, in your complaints video was good, in that it's not necessarily bad once we take everything and all the lore post the boss's death. And we can start theorizing and piecing together some good narratives about it. But the way it can be presented to you on a first playthrough is p- maybe potentially not great. And it just lands in your lap and leaves kind of a sour taste without it getting a chance to justify its existence to you. Um, I-, I presume you're talking from a lore point. Obviously, yeah, I yeah from, a, mechanically from a story well. point of view. Yeah, I, I totally get what, the way that you said it as well. I, I didn't mind it that much even then though because i i know there's a lot of godwin stuff but i was not i didn't go in with any expectations for godwin and for godwin i didn't yeah i i kind of in my head i thought the godwin story is kind of done it's just that was just my um interpretation i think again you discussed it on stream and like you godwin story is just now he is essentially just soulless and almost a zombie there's not really much else to get from him he's now just a source of death and i feel like his story is complete as it is um i do get 
what people are saying about him being a better fit, maybe. But I get, I wasn't necessarily disappointed. I was just a little bit like, oh, it's Rodan, okay. Um, <laughs> I, I messed up Ansbach's and Freya's quest the first time as well. So it wasn't, I didn't, I missed all the signposts. And so he was just there. Um, so I had the experience that some people will have had where he is literally just there and, and you're not particularly sure about it. But I think the, the lore justifications that we've got are fine. It's just like you say, we get a lot of them after he's dead and then it's too late to get that first impression back. Yeah, he's also like a tough boss, which was uh, kind of makes the issue a little... You, you, you might be sitting there several hours. Like I know a guy that took 18 hours to beat him, like just straight 18 hours <laughs> rushing back into the boss fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and so it's so like people will have hours and hours to like to mauled over over seeing Rathon and like it just just thinking about it, it's like, why the hell is he here? Just getting more and more upset. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, just why am I fighting this guy? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I feel like on launch, obviously Melania didn't have the lore issue, but people hated Melania initially as well, as a character as well, because she was so difficult. So mm. you you add that in with some difficult story elements with Rodan, and you have got a recipe for a lot of hatred. I do think in time the discourse around it will even out a little bit, but I think it was just a bit of a surprise, and I think the leaks prior to launch didn't help that definitely stoked got people's back up before they'd even had a chance to jump into the dlc i got that, spoiled that on, on really radon the day of the the release like on my on my final oh, video God. of a spoiler spoiler free video the final video somebody told oh, me that radon, uh, was the was the final boss and i'm sitting there and i'm like this is has to be a troll no one would do this like no one would willingly come into my comment section <laughs> yeah. and spoil it yeah. on the last day right before I, like hours before i get to play um and and then also it be Radon. Why would it be Radon? That's ridiculous. I didn't believe it. <laughs> I, I went. And then I, you went in. Yeah. Uh, are you, oh my god. And what what was your first impression when you found out it was Radon? Did you find out through? I found out through Ansbach and, and yeah through Ansbach. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then also um, and then also since I had that previous spoiler from from the commenter, confirmed it for you. It was getting, yeah. It was just confirmed for me. It's like okay, it's actually Radon. And how did? How did you feel about it initially? Weirded I, by I, it? There doesn't seem to be anything in the base game like that we knew before the DLC. Like mm -hmm. we, we obviously have the Mikola and Melan sorry, the Melania whispering in mm -hmm. Radon's ear. And now that yeah, okay, that, that, that helps. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot. Yeah, that it helps does. It definitely helps. It definitely does help. It's yeah. a real bomb yeah. to me that we have that. Um but mm -hmm. before that, before we have that that piece of information, it's like, well, why would it be Radon? Where was there any any indication, even in the DLC before this this one moment, there wasn't much of an indication that it was going to be Radon or that Radon would be. Um, yeah, I just think it was. I just think it was poorly done. Uh, I think that they, they should have been uh, yeah. more signs, at least one in the base game. At least one person on this earth should have been like, you know what, Mikkel is going for Radon as his consort. That's if one crazy person on this earth yeah. <laughs> had thought of yeah. it. Uh, yeah, because you're right, because no lore theorist up till the DLC release would have ever gone over a theory of mentioning Mikla and Radan even in the same sentence. Right. Right. They've <laughs> right. never come up in the, they've never come up in the same conversation. I right. mean that is not not a good sign, really. And I'm I'm a glazer and um I do agree that it's not there's some definitely connective issues. Mm -hmm. Definitely some connective issues that we need to iron out in the months to come. So how definitely. do you how do you feel about it post the the fight now we have all the information how do you feel about um okay so there there are people that are like this is retconning like it was clearly meant to be godwin like they changed the story or something godwin was going to be the guy miyazaki uh is, is caving into the radon fanboys and he's and he's give he's <laughs> fan servicing so, for them i i wouldn't go that far i i don't remember there being like a huge voice online about there being a prime radon fight i know people have said oh some people have said they like a, a prime Rodan fight, but I've not heard it that much to the point where I think From Software literally gave <laughs> and wreck on something. I do think it was their plan when they set out to do this DLC. Maybe they saw that Rodan was popular in general and they wanted to integrate him somehow, but I don't think anything was retconned. Um, I'm f I am fine with it. I'm fine with the lore that we've got and that we'll be able to work it out. I do just believe it was maybe badly signposted in the base game if that was always the intent. Mm. Um, but I'm I'm fine with it post post fact. I think it was a great spectacle fight as well, which definitely helps its case of making me want to make sense of it in a lore video, which you know I will attempt to do in the future. 
Um, but yeah, I'm, I de it's definitely grown on me since. And yeah, well, you know, we'll make it work. What about yourself? I I'm. I think Are you I less th liking it <laughs> as I, time goes by. <laughs> I I think it's there's there's potential uh, for me to yeah. like it. There's potential for me to like it, but uh, I would need to think of something that I haven't thought of yet. You know, like yes. I agree. Yeah, I, I would the, need to be like. There's not that. Oh, great! That's why. Yeah, I've never. I've not had that yet either. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And so, mm. some, some, somebody or, or or myself looking into the lore, or somebody else looking at somebody else's lore video needs to like come up with an idea that that I'm like, okay, yeah, now that that makes sense to me. Now that makes more sense. It, oh, of course, of course. <laughs> like little the William Defoe touching his head in in that uh, American Psycho movie. Yeah, yeah of course. Because <laughs> there, there's. Basically, the way it stands now is that the the vow law lore between them could be anything, mm. right? It could it could take any shape. It could be that they made a vow that they would kill Radan exactly that way. They would have a big battle, or it could be that they had a vow, but then Radan changed his mind. Or yeah, yeah, well, well, you know what, do you what think? I mean. There's what do you so think about, about how okay. Do you think that Radan agreed to something? Like, do you think that he that he so. Initially, in my story explain video, I said I don't think even Radan made a vow because conspicuously, you know, we never see Radan, right? There's that bit, there's that cinematic where Mikkel is on his knees making a vow, and I was expecting to see Radan there, and I'd be like, right, okay, yeah, there's a vow, but we never hear Radan's side of it. However, I think they agreed to something because Mikkel does see our part of the vow, which means there's another part of the vow i.e. Redan's side of the vow. I but I still can't believe that the vow was you literally have to come to Caled and kill me. I feel like it must have been something along the lines of, all right, Mikla, if I ever die, can you bring me back to life? And if you do, I'll be your consort. Mm. Something like that. Some conditional vow. It's hard it's it's hard to make sense of at the moment, I'll be I'll be real. Um but I do think there has to have been some agreement. I did say there probably wasn't, and that's still very possible. But I'm coming around to the fact that there was some kind of conditional agreement between them that led up to the events uh, of the Battle of Ionia. What about yourself? I think that in the in the memory cutscene, it, it seems to be a memory. Like it said, you you yeah. click on it, it says memory. So it, it's somebody's yes. memory. It's either Mikola's memory or Radon's memory. Because those are the two people that you fight, and of course they're going to drop a memory. So if it's anybody, it's yep. one of those two people yep. remembering something. So he he says, "Lord brother, I'm going to be a god." So he's talking to. So either Mikkel is talking, talking to, to Radan, to Radan, or yeah. he's in in a room by himself. I guess that's possible yes. if you really wanted to. But it seems to be like he's asking Radan for something. It's like if we keep our part of the vow, will you please be my consort? So that that indicates two things to me. There's there's a second part of the vow. Uh, agreed. Yeah, that's agreed, already yeah. been made. Uh, and then number two, he's asking him. He's not like charming him or manipulating him. So uh, he's 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 for what I I don't think you can just charm. No, and I don't think he necessarily would have had the power to charm someone as intelligent and as powerful as Rodan. I'm not in the Mikla charmed Rodan into accepting a vow crowd. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm just trying to work out how this vow would work and. What well, he has, get out of it, knowing their characters, you know. I, I lean into maybe he does have the power to do it. I mean, he charmed. We we have precedent Charm of him Moog, charming Moog. Yeah. He charmed a, yeah. a demigod. We have a precedent of him charming Ansbach, which is like a very logical and uh, and powerful. He can charm the tarnished, you know, and he can buff intelligence as, as, as yeah. it'll go. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, but but uh, my idea has been more like. He's an equivalent to an Elden Lord. Like, the consort is the equivalent of, of yes, Elden Lord. Yes, he's a, a Mechlin Lord, yeah. And yeah. the other people that become Elden Lord for whatever age they want to, to follow, they're not really tricked into it unless you're Flame of Frenzy, I guess. And, you know, in that one, the, the, the control is taken off of you. Like, you don't even get to Marika's statue. You fall to the ground before you get to it. Um, the, the other ones, you have to kind of choose to do it. You have to accept Ronnie's Age of the Stars, or you have to accept Gold Mask's Perfect Order ending. Yeah, and integrate it, yeah. 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 And so I've always kind of viewed the metaphorical significance of the of the chosen ending and the Elden Lord as the kind of, like, a constitution, 
and an elected official. So, yes. Yes. so a constitution is like the founding principle of what your order is going <clears throat> to be like. And then the old Elden Lord is the elected official that, that makes decisions and governs for the age. That's why Godfrey was so important to everybody. And Radigan was so important. And they, 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 they rule. They actually do rule. It's, they're not they're just like puppets the prime, of America. Yeah, they're like the prime ministers. Yes. And Mark is essentially the vessel of yeah. the Elden Ring. In, yes. in essence, yeah. 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 Um, so so Redan would rule in this. So I'm really not in the charmed category because um, he wouldn't be able to rule if he was essentially, you know, a puppet zombie. Mm -hmm. But my, my problem is with it is how, how does it mesh with what happens in Ionia? I find it difficult to believe that the Battle of Ionia is some ritualistic killing Combat. of Redan so he can be resurrected as a lord because... He, him and Mikla would essentially be agreeing to obliterate a whole region of the world and you know lead to thousands of deaths yeah. and you know essentially t mm -hmm. and essentially could lead to his sister you know becoming a goddess of rot as well which you know it's a problem all in of itself yeah well I, I would assume that Radon didn't know she was gonna scarlet rot no, everything no I, I, I agree yes I agree uh and they didn't go to war until after the shattering. So the yeah. shattering happened, and then at that point, they go to war. Uh, Radon yes. has his great rune, Melania has her Agreed. great rune, Mercula has his great rune. And the only thing we know about the shattering is the, the mad taint of the great runes yeah. drove them all Agreed. insane. Yeah. Um, Agreed. That, that's the only thing that makes sense to me, is that that war is just something else that happened because of the mad taint of the runes. And they made the agreement prior to the shattering. Yeah. That's the only thing that makes sense to me about it. it is difficult though let's be real that the reconciling of the battle of ionia with redan now being consort is a difficult part of the lore hmm. it definitely is um but i agree i think there was a vow and redan agreed to the conditions of becoming mikla's lord yeah if ever these conditions came about is, is what i believe yeah i also think that just the the, the fact that he's called the promised consort uh redan uh, his weapons are called promised consorts stuff. Melania calls him the promised consort when when they're fighting in, in mm -hmm. Ionia. And you don't, I, I don't think that you can just be the promised consort if it's one sided. Mikula just no. decides. Well, no, you're, you're my promised consort. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I think that the part of the vow that Mikula made to Radan is bringing him back to life because when we enter the arena, he says the promise is kept. Mm my lord brother is now returned that is what i that's what i think that's why i think the part of the vow that redan got out of it was if i ever die bring me back and then i'll be your and consort. i will be your lord yeah. and i'll be your lord that's that's what i've got at the moment that's my that's my working theory because when we enter the arena michael's like yeah we've kept our side now and my lord brother's back is what he basically says do you think he's thanking you and melania when he, yes okay yeah that's what i yes. that's what i was thinking my loyal blade yeah. and champion of the festival is what he said yeah. so i was like okay he must be thinking the two people responsible for putting an end to radon so yeah. that he's actually and dead and he can go to the land of shadow correct yeah so that that's how, what i think the vow is as for if radon would have any sour grapes about being killed by mikla's right hand in order to be brought back to keep this vow i mean i don't know um but i'm i presume that he'd obviously be pretty grateful he's not a scarlet rotted mess anymore mm -hmm. um so yeah that that's my thoughts on it for now i'll try and iron out details later on i'm letting that one percolate before i do a lore video on it but yeah my working theory is that the vow was conditional that if Redan ever died he would ask mikla to bring him back and in return he would serve as his lord consort i think that's as good as anything especially i think yeah yeah especially that he says now the vow will be fulfilled and yes. my lord brother will be brought back that's i mean that's as Correct. that's as as well as we almost parse that sentence that's that's half of the vow there is yeah. Redan got out of this what Redan got out of this vow is he was brought back to life that's what he gets out of it mm -hmm. um yeah that that's as, as close as i've reasoned to and obviously Mikla gets a consort out of it so yeah that's that's it but any other specifics i'm still trying to iron out so do you think that Redan maybe didn't want to do it usually like he didn't think he was going to get killed or something so so when, when he went to war in the shattering like he didn't just he wasn't just defensively being in caled defending himself from melania he also attacked the capital 
uh, and was repelled by Morgoth. Yeah, I think that you you kind of said it right um, with the shattering thing. I think that the shattering happened and they all just went to war, mm. right? And I think Redan maybe made this vow to Mikla a lot a long time ago, and they all just kind of forgot, you know, these vows and bonds of alliance and stuff like that, and they all just kind of went mad and did their own thing. Um, but when Melania kills Redan, he's obviously restored to his pre-shattering you know form they don't have their great runes anymore they're not tainted by that anymore mm. so yeah you're right i think that rodan was just involved in a war and obviously i've been a proponent of him attacking the capital from that slide that we get in the introduction of him tussling with uh, Morgoth. i've always said that i believe that's rodan so again that's just why would he be attacking you know lane dale and stuff it just seems like he's pursuing his own power during the shattering right um like everyone else is because of their mad taint of their runes basically okay i think i think we agree pretty much on radon i i yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no totally i i i i had a different view when i first made that summary video but i think that reflecting on it more um what you've said as well is more or less what i agree on as well yeah mm. okay let's talk about the timeline of events because i think the dlc really like shook the foundations of what i thought about the timeline in a, mm. like, I, I, I can't go back to it, wait. What do you think, <laughs> what do you think happened and when? So, yeah. So I, I have actually put too much thought into this as well, trying to kind of break my head a little bit with it. So Mesmer's Crusade is the easiest part of the DLC to place. I put that in, like, really, I'm doing my fingers here. Um, it's really the easiest part. And that it has to have taken place later on in the earth tree rule when after radigan and ranella's marriage and most likely when radigan was elden lord for a couple of reasons um first of all he was as an older brother to radan which means that mesmer was still around when ranella and radigan's marriage had happened and radan was a young man there is also the fact that his blade is Rolana, who is a Carrion princess, who would have been unlikely to go with Mesmer had it been pre Radigan and Renala marriage when the houses united, as before that they were enemies. And finally, he knows what Tarnished is. Mm -hmm. When we enter his throne room, he immediately recognizes us as a Tarnished, which suggests that he was around when Godfrey and his warriors were banished and became the first Tarnished. So I think that it's placed later on the timeline than I initially suggested pre-release when I thought maybe it would have been part of the Erdtree Conquest Wars. That yeah, simply I, think, I thought the, the same thing. I thought the same it, thing it, back then. Yeah, yeah. It, it simply doesn't seem to be the case, especially when you consider the final battle of the Erdtree Conquest were the Fire Giants, and yet now the Fire Giants adorn the Furnace Golems. They have their, you have the, they have Fire Giants on their legs, which presumably means that this crusade took place after the fire giant conflict had become legend essentially mm -hmm. so yeah there's lots of little bits here and there that make me think that it's basically quite late on um there's also omen killers and stuff at the fort of reprimand there's also rykard's abductor virgins which again means that you know rykard was a thing at that point and he developed his ideology ideology enough to have developed the abductor virgins right so, yeah a little bit de details like that that make me think it's later on in our tree what are omen killers doing in that fort actually now that i think about it i don't think yeah they, yeah well, what if they yeah, thought about that at all yeah 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 there's omen killers in the fort of reprimand presumably because they're coming to kill graceless things right that are probably still omen in their eyes right the horn scent mm. probably not much different from omens because they're horned and touched by the crucible so yeah i think it takes later on in the uh in the timeline and but before the shattering because mesmer does not have a great rune um so so here's a, a a thing. I I agree with your placement. I just think it it happened before Radigan became Elden Lord. Um, yeah, I could definitely buy that. Yeah, for and sure. My my reasoning for that is that um, Relana's helmet talks about how Renala was the queen, and she gave her leave to go with Mesmer and gave her some yeah. of her hair, so she still has her wherewithal. You know, we, yeah, we before know, she's broken by yeah, Radigan's departure, yeah. Right. So if she if she if Radigan had left and she her mind had shattered, unless there was some period of her still being sane that we don't know about, uh, she would have still had to have been sane enough to to 
give her sister leave to go and give her her hair and, and give her a goodbye. Um, so I'm thinking post, post um, most things after the after yes. the Leonian Wars. Yes. But before Radigan becomes Elden Lord in that small slice of time when he's still with Rolanda. Yeah, I agree. With yeah, Renata. I agree. Uh, it probably does have to be there. Um, and we could just explain the fact he knows what Tarnished are because he heard. Or maybe he was still there for that, but he left before Radigan became... There's a gap, I don't know, between the rule. I don't know. Yeah, that, yeah that's odd. Uh, it's possible. So I was I was always under the impression that there might have been a gap. Now that now that kind of... somebody I, w I was convinced yesterday on a, on stream that... Um, yeah. That when Godfrey was banished, Radigan immediately became Elden Lord, like right after, with with a very yeah, he gap. sprinted sprinted right over there as soon as he as soon as he left. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but but if Rat if if there was no gap, and Godfrey is with Merica at the same time as Radigan is with Rolana. Sorry, with Renala. <laughs> I yeah. keep messing those yeah. up. So it's such uh, difficult names to. To get it different yet for sure then he wouldn't have known what a tarnished is yet because the, yes he would have started his war and been in the land of shadow before any of that Correct. happened and he never left afterwards so he has no news no. from from after that and it's and it's a specific term tarnished right because he can know he could probably recognize a graceless being and just but it's the fact he uses that particular term suggests he knows what they are right because otherwise he would just say oh you're a graceless grub or something i don't know but mm -hmm. um using that specific term but yeah that, i could buy that there's a gap you know godfrey could have got banished his warriors could get sent away and then at that point you know mesmer undertakes the crusade before radigan you know takes his place as elden lord so it's definitely later on though mm -hmm. uh, there's plenty of evidence that points that you know we've even got like capital perfumers and stuff they wouldn't have been around at the time of the uh yeah the earth tree conquest yeah. stuff like that so yeah later on but where for the other stuff that happens when um, it's definitely harder to, to play some of the other stuff have you got any kind of particular subjects that you want yeah, to place in the yeah timeline? okay when was the land of shadow removed from the lands between oh okay yeah this is <laughs> this is a difficult one this is the one that <laughs> this is something i'm working on in my mesmer video that i'm working on right now so in my summary video again i, I did a lot of things that were on my first impression i said that it was likely that as soon as the shadow tree was born, as soon as gold and shadow were born at the same time, that's when it was separated. Because I think cosmically that makes sense. But there is a lot that points to the shrouding happening or the disconnecting happening after Mesmer goes and that that's the mechanism by which Marika traps him there. Because consider how difficult it is for Mikla to get there. How would Mesmer's entire army of thousands of troops and furnace golems get there aside from explaining it away like i did just saying it's marika's powers that she transported them there additionally there's other stuff like godwin's surrogates are in the land of shadow now again you could explain that by them being cosmically drawn in to the realm of shadow but could it also not be possible that they ex they grew out from there after his death i don't know um but yeah I, I'm, I'm starting to maybe think that it was after mesmer went through that she did seal it off there's also the shroud in the sky that does obviously look like marika's bedrooms shrouds which suggests it's actually her hand behind it rather than it being an automatic process yeah. it is difficult because we, we don't get any items that specifically say oh marika then shrouded him after he went in there's nothing that says that so we are just having to speculate my but, my yeah, i'm not sure I, i'm having difficulty with it because um people are Assuming that when the Land of Shadows crept up was when Merica removed the Rune of Death from the Elden Ring. Uh, so either either as soon as, as she became, uh, you know, what, what's shown in the cutscene in the story trailer. Yeah. So either at that moment or right after she removed the Rune of Death from the Elden Ring. God, yep. we need to talk about that in the story trailer in a moment. Yeah. But... <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, because uh because there's like lines in the game that calls the rune of death the forbidden shadow um plucked from yeah plucked from yeah. the from the elden ring and it makes sense but that it, it was that these lands were cosmically removed at the same time as the rune was yeah definitely does make sense in a way yeah but it also makes sense that mesmer's trapped in there uh i don't think yes. he can leave 
I don't think he can no. willing, you know, leave whenever no. he wants. He's stuck in there. And he seems to be talking about how uh, he wants to draw his mother, the ire of everybody. So, and and the people that followed him were condemned, even though they were high-ranking Erdtree officials, like the Fire Knights. They were high-ranking Erdtree nobles. Um, so it seems like he's doing some kind of false flag where it's just him. He's pretending like, oh yeah, it's just me. Because there seems yeah. to be the people outside. It's my of, orders. Yeah. Yeah. The people yeah. outside of the, in the lands between, they see this and they're condemning him for it. You know, yeah. that's the only explanation for, for him being hounded yeah. out and, and the Fire Knights. And, and Berlan has to give up her claims and the Fire Knights are hounded out of the aristocracy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It only makes sense if he's saying it's my operation when in fact Mark has asked him to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I agree. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you see the veil in the story trader, uh, so she it's it seems like she's hiding him away hiding away her actions with the horn scent uh it would make sense if right like she puts them in there lets them go in and then seals them off from the from the lands between agreed yeah agreed i just i can't that, I'm, I'm not convinced either way like i'd need a really strong piece of evidence to, to lean me in one way or the other or me neither and my in my latest video on Mesmer, I, I'm arguing both sides. I am leaning towards that one as well, that it was after he went in, that it mm. was sealed off. Because, like I say, how else do we explain Mesmer getting there? Pri if, if it had already been sealed, what are we saying? That she transported him there and just didn't take them back or something? Um, there's, st there's other things as well. So the Crucible Knight Devonia is found in Raw Runes, right? This one's a strong one for me. And she's gone there, according to her helmet, to find the origins of the Crucible. How would she have gotten there mm. if it had previously been sealed? Right. If it, you're right. If she had, if Mer oh, that's How a, would she that's, have that's a real strong one, okay. I think. So that if, that is a strong one. Yeah. If Merica, if the land of shadows was removed from the lands between the moment that Merica ascended into godhood and exactly. the tree was born, she she wouldn't be able to get there because she's a crucible knight. She's one of Godfrey's soldiers. Yep. yep. And yep. I'm pretty sure it says specifically she left the lands of the tree. Hold on, let me find it. Devonia. Uh, don't, yeah. yeah, so she left the lands of the Erd Tree. Sorry, bear with me. Yeah. She departed from the lands of the Erd Tree alone. So she specifically wasn't here prior. Mm -hmm. She was in the lands of the Erd Tree and she came here. So how would that have been possible had the Shroud already been in place from the beginning? Right. And she so must I have done that. She must have done that a long time ago, like before right. Moog was killed. She didn't take the Moog right. route. No, she she did that off her own back when Crystal Knight started to fall out of favor, presumably mm -hmm. in the capital. So that that's I'm definitely leaning towards the the shrouding after Mesmer had done the crusade, and that Devonia was able just to walk to these lands at that time right. when Be she initially left. Yeah, you think the Divine Bridge connected to uh, the the Hornsent Tower the before it was I, so I, I haven't I haven't looked at any of that kind of evidence myself it's definitely possible and it's definitely possible that all these kind of divine towers that circle that area are just connected to this old civilization but to be honest I haven't looked at like the old topography much myself is it quite compelling have you seen like theories on this or something presumably shadow altus is in altus or at least was part of the original altus yeah the southern out. southern part of altus or something right yeah, yeah. Uh, and the the divine bridge connected to something, and it seems to like just not connect true. to anything anymore. Yeah. And if no, you yeah, if you really line them up, it it looks kind of like it would connect to a um to the 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 Hornsent Tower. Yeah, there's there's other little tangential bits of evidence that I look at in this. I can keep plugging myself in this Mesmer video I'm doing, where there's it seems like there's a crossover of cultures as well, which suggests that Bellarat existed, you know, close to. Lindell and was you know allowed to exist there's the festive greece that says that a uh, archery rule permitted this old custom of the horn scent mm -hmm. and there's the dueling shield um which says that the combat sports of the capital uh was also culturally transferred to the lands of shadow and i find that all quite difficult if it's been shrouded from the beginning these transfer of cultural ideas has to have surely happened when they were in the same plane of existence. So just little details like that is making me kind of edge towards it being a shrouding that happened after Mesmer had arrived here. 
this this actually brings us to a, an interesting topic. So the the horn scent and Merica, do you do you think that they were like allied for a long time before she betrayed them? Um or she ruled over them. There's Churches of America everywhere. They call her a betrayer. Uh they're all over the lands of shadow too with their with her head cut off after after yeah. the fact. And it's not until and and their civilization predates her. So and it's not yes. until Mesmer's assault way into the Ur tree's rule that uh that she attacks them. So the thing about the betrayal is it's difficult and it's made difficult by the story trailer because obviously Mesmer set them aflame but the betrayal could be that or it could be her initial acts that allowed her to rise to power because the story trailer shows her becoming a god at the gate of divinity whilst talking about this seduction and, and betrayal. betrayal yeah so it's hard to understand what the betrayal is i think for, either way for the purposes, Mark allowed them to exist for the purposes of this one, I'm not talking about that betrayal. I'm talking about specifically like the horn scent that, yeah, that we hear talking. Uh, yeah, I that, I agree. I think I think they were allowed to exist under her rule for a time, um, as I think other crucible elements were right. Like the like it, it the crucible knight gauntlets say that in time, the the elements of the crucible became disdained, which means that for a time they were fine under her rule. So I think that they were just, you know, existing under a part of a rule. Um, not necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily choose the word allies, but um, subjects of hers that were allowed to exist. Right. Uh, I'd definitely say so. Yeah. Right. And they must have, there's the Empyrean Grandam, and she, mm -hmm. I'm assuming, like I don't, I don't have much evidence for it, but I'm assuming she works kind of like the finger reader. She looks like a finger reader. Yeah. Uh, and she kind of, I don't think she's an Empyrean. I think she chooses Empyreans or or announces that this person is an Empyrean and is able to go to the gates of divinity or, or try to go to the gates of divinity. And Merica was chosen. So she seems to be a product of the Horns and Civilization. She comes from the Shadowlands, from the... Um... By the way, do you think the... Sh you, you, we, we're in agreement the Shaman and the Numen are the same thing? Shamans and yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The shaman is just the old term for them. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, she ascends to godhood. She doesn't seem to get attack the horn scent right away, even though she she apparently wants no. to. She wants revenge. Uh, the horn scent hate the fire giants. The horn scent talk about the fire giants with dread in their in their lore. She goes to war with the fire giants. I think she's just yeah. They're they're her subjects. They're her subjects. Yeah. People that she rules over. Um, Agreed. And then she starts the Erdtree civilization, and they seem to be fine with it. There's there's a cross cultural thing going on, um, until she she later betrays but them. Then she then she yeah has them burned and and stuff. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I totally agree. And yeah, that like I say, that festive grease item again suggests that for a time they were allowed to just carry on as usual with their own cultural practices, including this festival under the Erdtree. I guess we should get to the to the toughy. Um, <laughs> this relates to like the seduction and betrayal. Right. Do you think Do you think you know what what the seduction and betrayal is? Because I think it's just as confusing as it was initially. Yeah, it's, it's like is it the is it the fingers that seduced America and then she and then she betrayed the fingers or the fingers seduced her and betrayed her or she seduced the fingers or or the horn scent or like who's being seduced and who's being betrayed. And what what was the viscera and cloth or, that she pulled the golden strands yeah. out of? Is that the Glomite Queen? <laughs> Why? I, I, um, you know, when I went into the DLC, I was really hoping there would be actually some direct lore on this event. And that's probably the thing that disappointed me the most, is there's no anything really in regards to this seduction and betrayal. So you're right, we are just kind of guessing. My narrative is going from kind of what Ymir says that he she was led from she was led by fingers from the beginning right there's the finger rune that's nearby uh, the village of the shamans so i'm my assumption is that she was directed by a fingers to do what she did and what she did and again i'm just guessing is she got close to and betrayed either the elden lord or the god of the horn scent era took their power and 
entered the de- the gate of divinity to become the new god. That's all I've got. That that's really what I'm going to go with for now until I kind of get any kind of other compelling narrative otherwise. Um, but I think Ymir's quest makes it quite clear that from the beginning she was led by fingers. And additionally, you get the the new talisman from the finger runes. I can't remember the name of it. I think yeah. Crimson Seed ones plus two, yeah. something like that. Um, and they talk about the beginning of the Earth Tree and that they potentially gave Marika uh, the seed that became the Earth Tree. Yeah. So I think from the beginning she was led by the fingers. She was directed by the fingers to do what she did and become the new god. At the end of the day, the fingers still proclaim that Marika is the vessel you know, of the, the greater will's vision. So she was chosen by the, well, not well, maybe not the greater will anymore, but she was chosen <laughs> by the two fingers yeah. to, to do what she did. And I think they, do, they, they concocted a plan between them. And she, yeah, like you say, maybe through Imperian Grandum, um, somehow got access to the gate of divinity or got close to the current god killed and betrayed them usurped the horde sent rule by becoming the new god that's my narrative um i do you think the yours. old do you think the old god was was the the geck the good old geck <laughs> no no i'm i'm still a big melon was the glow my queen person and okay. i always i always will be i'm a massive okay proponent of that argument okay so Lead me through this. I, 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 I actually can't let go of this Glomite Queen thing. I've become, I've <laughs> you become sleep, really uh, you upset. You would sleep, sleep at night. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, I can't deal with with no Glomite Queen lore. Like I know now what the Velka people felt like back in back in Dark, <laughs> Dark Souls three. Days. Yeah, yeah there, yeah. there were people that were very pro. Like, Velka's totally going to be in the DLC. They all the signs point of it. They're looking at the stars. They're they've got all of their instruments. They're like the signs say <laughs> Velka will be in the DLC, <laughs> and then they they got very disappointed when she wasn't there. And now I know exactly what they feel like because I'm I'm in the exact same position. I am just mourning <laughs> that we that we don't have <laughs> Glomite Queen lore to talk about. So- so are you are you a person who doesn't believe that Melina is the Glomite Queen? Or is it just you're not convinced by the arguments? Or, no, no. Or, or what is it you think about it? So I think Mer- Melina has so many connections to the Glomite Queen, it's weird. Like, it's... it's yeah. Um, yeah. So what, what are her connections? Uh, she's always talking about death and discriminant. That's what she wants. She wants you to... She knows where the, the Rune of Death is. She wants to get you to, to the Rune of Death. She can burn the Earth Tree... Uh, She's talking about how how she wants death indiscriminate to go over the land between and the Glomite Queen's power came from the Rune of Death. You know, the, the, the power of the Black Flame to kill gods came from the Rune of Death, and once Malak had sealed it, she no longer has access to the power. The Black Flame doesn't have access to that same power. Uh, she, she also talks about births. When you try and go to the Flame of Frenzy, she's like, births continue. Births are good. Uh, the Glomite Queen was ta- was known for births, and she's sw- swaddling yep. cloths yep. and and the and the Gonskin apostles. What else? The uh, the fact that she has a glom eye at the end of the, uh, the in the <laughs> yeah, flame of yeah, frenzy. It's, 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 it's a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah. Um, um, go ahead. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence around her that you know, but yeah, there's nothing that says Melon is the Glomite Queen as well either, for sure. Do you think that she's she is America's daughter and? She yes. she rebelled against Marika at some point with her Glomide army, like the the Godskin Apostle army, and the Godskin Hunt was was them trying to go after the demigods or whatever demigods were yeah. around at the time. One one hundred percent. I think there's just so much circumstantial evidence that stacks up that that is exactly what happens. Melina is, I mean, she's definitely the daughter of Marika. She says that you know my mother within the Earth Tree. There's only you know one person in the Earth Tree at this point. It has to be Marika. Yeah. Um, she also fights like a uh, Black Knife Assassin, who are again kin to Marika. So wherever you stand on the Black Knife Assassin argument, Melina co- is is the same fighting she's a, style. She's as a Black Knife Assassin. Yeah. She yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's uh, yeah. She's one of you no. Know, like she's <laughs> she's you know she's again linking her to Marika's bloodline and and people. And now we've got this you know new bit of lore can that from Mesmer's Kindling, where his younger sister also had visions of fire is mm-hmm. what it says it, it has to be melina although that doesn't necessarily mean she's the glomide queen but it more or less cements at least for me that melina is another daughter 
of Marika. Oh, yeah, the, the my... Mesmer. Mesmer's more evidence. Okay, Mesmer is has got snakes on it. The Glomite Queen is associated to snakes yes. because the, the, yes. the Godskin Apostles the bo- have snake-like yeah. qualities, including snake And they both tail. have fire. Yeah, yes. and they both have fire. So yeah, they both it's, have it's, fire. So, it's so circumstantial, but it, it, it's mountains of circumstantial, circumstantial evidence. evidence. Yeah. It's it's, uh, yeah, it's not a, a it's, one or the other. You'd be taking him. To, you'd be taking her to court with this amount of circumstantial evidence. <laughs> it's so overwhelming. So I, I think it's it's almost undeniable at this point. You can choose not to believe it if you don't want to, because yes, there is nothing that says Melina is the Glomite Queen. But it's there's so much, and aside from anything else, it makes so much sense that we don't know anything about this. We've never heard about this first generation or generation of fire before. And it would make sense why we've never heard of either of them now. Mesmer was sealed away in the lands of Shadow for his abyssal serpent was demonized and hence why he's not celebrated. Melina, if she's the Glomide Queen, it makes sense why she's burned and bodiless and forgotten about Mm -hmm. because she led an unsuccessful rebellion against Marika. That's why she's not celebrated. That's why there's no statues. That's why she's not talked about. So I'm I'm pretty satisfied where she is. I, I, I know it would have been nice to get more. What were you hoping to to get out of the DLC, just out of interest? Is there anything else you wanted kind of filled in? So, he... <laughs> um, I have a hard time stop getting rid of my pet theory, which was okay. that the Glomite Queen was the previous uh, ruler, and mm-hmm. that the thing that Merrick is taking the, the strands off is a dead snake, and that's an eyeball of the snake, because Tim Diggity made that video talking about how he thinks that that's that's what it was and so i did i didn't like really believe it but the but the more things lined up the more i kind of wanted to believe it so yeah so glow my queen i kind of wanted melina and mesmer to be the sons of radigan and the glow my queen i really thought that that was that made sense it's if it, it's in line with what merica had done before with uh renala you know they couldn't conquer something, uh, so they adopt them it. as and adopt them as step stepchildren as well. Mm-hmm. But I mean, they're obviously our other half's children as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so there's still the strange connection with Radigan and the fire giants, or or perhaps a strange connection where where you know you have the giant sprite and talks about how Radigan hates his his red hair, and that the fire giants had red hair, and and then it says perhaps it is a curse of their kind. Uh, perhaps implying that Radigan has some kind of connection to the Fire Giants. And so that would explain why Mesmer and Merica have fire attributes when paired with the Glomite Queen. And if Merica took something out of the snake eye that's the dead body of the Glomite Queen in the story trailer, it might explain why it's resurfacing in the children. So Mesmer has an abyssal serpent that is missing one of its eyes, <laughs> Uh, yeah, just like he's missing one of his eyes now, I suppose, and that might be the reason why it's missing one of its eyes. But um, and then Mer- Melina has a glow eye, uh, and so it's it's a resurfacing of, of of something like that, or something like uh, Crunchy had had a video talking about how maybe Merica is the Glomite Queen, and the Glomite Queen was like Radigan before Radigan was around. Like there was a or, or so her- like another another yeah. half of her i hadn't seen that video so so he was suggesting that it was like another uh, personality of hers yes. essentially yes okay uh, one that she killed kind of, or or discarded yeah kill, yeah much and we like... see obviously we've obviously seen mikla doing that with centrina now so we know it's possible to mm-hmm. and i've i've argued before by the way that marika's plan in the base game is to get you to kill off radigan right uh, as her other half right that that's essentially her plan and she'll carry on being the vessel for the Elden Ring as you become Elden Lord. But yeah, we, we know that it's possible now, definitely, to kill off other halves. So yeah, it's definitely possible. Uh, I, um, I, I suppose it's like, the, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. It's just too many Glomide Queen connections. And I would have liked a definitive answer to like, okay, which one of these makes the most sense? Uh, which which one of these can we, can we like really put above the others? And, and you know, I just don't like the Glomide Queen detractors. The Glomite Queen detractors have had to, <laughs> How dare they detract from the Glomite Queen? It's clear, there's clearly connections here. What do you mean? Yeah. Uh, this is not a Valka situation. This is I mean, not the same thing. Yeah, I know. I mean, you know, every visionary is going to have its detractors for sure. Yeah. Um, but but I, uh, I, I don't think any of these things are necessarily wrong. And it's at the end of the day, Melon is, uh, and the Glomite Queen, Queen's lore has still been left door wide open. Mm. 
you know, I talk about the circumstantial evidence for Melina, and that's all it is. There's nothing that says outright that she is. So these theories can still continue, but I understand that there is literally nothing else on the Glowing Queen in the in the in the DLC. There is only an oblique reference to Melina, but I think that that oblique reference confirms her at least as a daughter of Marika. Yes, I think that 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 that's quite, quite and a sister to Mesmer. And a sister to Mesmer. So yeah. it's, I think that's good for her lore, at least, because Melina was a little bit adrift in that regard. And I think what's nice now is we have an idea of these different generations of the demigods starting maybe with Mesmer and Melina and working our way down, which is definitely nice. This but, is actually yeah, interesting. Do you think Mesmer... How, how old do you think Mesmer is? And if... if who, who do you think is the pairing? It's it's a radigan Merica pairing? Yeah, I think it's a radigan Merica. Uh, pairing and it predates um, all of the other children firstborn i'm i would guess so because right let's say let's go with melina let's say she is sister of mesmer which it, it's heavily hinting she is she knows minor Erdtree, the incantation which is a secret incantation of queen marika from her early days mm. so my interpretation is that melina was so close to marika's early days that she is the only one that knows this ancient secret right that's one that's definitely one very very circumstantial piece of evidence the other bits is i think just thematically um it makes more sense that radigan and marika would have this pairing prior to godfrey's golden lineage i think i i don't think it would be right if once godfrey became the elden lord that in the middle of that radigan and marika also had a child mm -hmm. i feel like the radigan marika pairing happened almost immediately when she was a god it's just that's what makes sense to me there's no evidence for it i'm just going with my gut on that what it, would you think it would also help that mesmer fought the giants and that's why they're all impaled yes. with weird things um like so he was around and was participating was, uh, yeah. in yeah. in the wars alongside godfrey and it helps that his shadow keep um has godfrey's icon in it has has a talisman with God, uh, godfrey's image in it yeah which again from the early days of of the the rule and stuff like that right that's yeah. when he gets he gets the possession of elden lord yeah yeah so i think i think that uh godfrey must have adopted him as a, as a step yes. son uh as as america's pre-existing children Mer melina and and, and uh, mesmer yeah i agree and like I say, I think that minor arteries, uh, that the Melina knowing that secret incantation isn't insignificant, um, especially since it's a part of Marika's essentially early history. Um, it, to me, it always speaks to the fact that Melina may, 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 well, may well be Marika's firstborn daughter anyway. Mm -hmm. It also, it makes sense thematically to have Mesmer be the oldest uh, or, or yeah. yeah, there's, there's, he's got, he's got firstborn vibes uh he's getting right, all of he does does he? yeah it's it's hard to put into words but i'm totally getting firstborn vibes from as well <laughs> for sure um but you're right and, the, and then he gets that significant possession of essentially being the hades of the pantheon and stuff like that now so there's yeah also, I think there's it, also a weird uh lucifer connection because in, in yeah so again paradise lost i've referenced this when i when i made a lucifer and, connection and, with i Ryan. now have read it yes i now have read it so i can understand <laughs> Um, ah, that's great. I, I, I love people having read Mephisto. It's one. It's one of the best. Um, it's, great. it's excellent. It's, it's, it really it's a, the best fan fiction I've ever read. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so uh, in Paradise Lost, and actually, maybe in I, I don't know if this is actually a thing in the Bible, but it's a thing in Paradise Lost, where Lucifer rebels specifically because he can't handle Jesus being number one. Like that's that's yes. his main thing. Yes, uh, he's like. Okay, I could handle being number two, since God's number one. But look how awesome I am. I'm the firstborn kind of thing. How am I going to be number three? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be number three. We got to rebel. Yeah. And so uh, Mesmer is is in the Shadowlands. He's been, he's been dutifully serving Merica this whole time. He's, he's taken all the ire and the frustrations of the people upon himself. And now he's been locked away. And then he looks at you and he's like, hey, you're tarnished. And and he yeah. recognizes yeah. that America wants you to be Elden Lord, uh, yeah. and he's like, I, I, yeah, he's yeah. so offended. <laughs> like he seems so offended to me. It's like, would you truly lordship sanction to someone so so devoid of light? Of, yeah, and even in the second stage, he's like, I yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stand for this. I'm yeah. not gonna stand for a tarnished lord. 
yeah. I'll literally unleash this serpent to kill you. <laughs> I'm not standing for it. Yeah, you're right. He, he but and he it's curses crazy, her in his it? dying breath, even though he served yeah. her so faithfully the whole time. And you would because he, she made him genocide people based on the fact they were graceless, mm -hmm. uh, and now a graceless tarnish is lord is wild. He must have must yeah, have absolutely was, blown he a was gasket. Pissed. He that. was yeah. pissed. Yeah, crazy, absolutely crazy. Uh, yeah, the hatred he has for us is uh, is mad. But yeah, I I really like his relationship to his mother. The way that they do it, uh, it's quite subtle, but it's yeah, it's very good, very very good. And you're right, it, it definitely feels like it's a firstborn task that he was given to go and do this crusade, and he served her dutifully. And there's that statue of her holding a baby, and again, it makes me think of you know her holding her firstborn in that um, that statue. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. So I, I guess back to the story trailer and the strands that America pulled out of the eye. We were okay. whatever whatever that happens to be. You're thinking that that was the old god and co or and or consort. Yes, and it's the, it's the old power of gold mm -hmm. because we know that you know prior to even the earth tree, the, the power gold of the existed. Elden Ring gold existed, right? And it was just in different forms, like the golden crucible and things like that. So I, I just thought it it's an indescribable power of gold that she's pulling from the body. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Let, let's assume let's assume that's the case. What do we do yeah. about the dragons now? Yeah. Um, it does make it difficult. I'll give you that. It, it does make it <laughs> difficult. But I I've always just seen the. I, I think I discussed this in my dragons video, and I might be off on this. But I used to always just think that the dragons were the first that were made. The first beings on the earth they're like the dinosaurs right they're like the uh, analogy for dinosaurs in this world they've got golden they've got golden skin under their scales as shown by zuli the witch's videos where she you know peeled back some of their scales and you can see it through fortis acts and placidus acts so to me they were always the kind of first life beings that were formed in the image of god and that god being the elden beast because it's very draconic in its appearance it also breathes golden fire like Placidus Axe does. So I don't think it necessarily changes them much. We we don't know how they draw on the power of the Elden Ring. Um, but I, I remember one of your old videos where you talked about the Golden Order. You pointed out the Elden Ring uh, depiction that's shown in Fire Mozilla. I agree that you know that is obviously the Elden Ring and they were drawing on its power before. And Placidus Axe and his god were just the custodians of it in an earlier age when the Elden, you know, the Ard Tree didn't exist. And I still think that's fine. I'm not sure how it meshes with the the Gate of Divinity. I think it just proves that the Gate of Divinity isn't the only way you can become a god. I think maybe the Gate of Divinity isn't the only way to become a god, but but So the fact that they have an Elden Ring means that yeah. the Elden Ring was already made before Merica, if if we assume the dragons predate Merica by a lot. Um, yes. So so whatever it is that there there must have been a uh, the dragons were defeated long ago. The 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 whatever whatever whatever's the the intermittent lords of of the ages by the time that america gets to it like the dragons just are not, are yeah. not a concern like they're yeah. not they're not a thing yeah because you know placidus axe has been in stasis essentially for ages right after his fight with bale we know now that his priestesses offer their sleep to him and he essentially is in i don't know a stasis yeah via that sleep to keep stay alive um and eventually the and dragons I, allied with the golden order right exactly because i guess they're, they're they still creatures war? of gold why did they go to war in the first place then like why well, did they attack could... the earth tree and and the golden well, order people it's, it's just it's one of these things unfortunately we're never going to know you could have maybe grand sax just led that attack himself uh, mm. as a faction of dragons maybe wanting to reclaim the power of the elden ring mm. yeah you know we can, we'll never know I imagine that Grand Sax is now just a warlord or leader of the dragons that emerged now after Placidus Axe went into his stasis. That makes sense. I, I do, th yeah, I, I do like the lore that was introduced about the dragons and the DLC. I think it does fill a lot of plot holes, um, and I've I've kind of long argued that between the dragons and Marika, there's definitely probably have been 
unnamed Elden Lords. We have the, you know, as I still always call him, Elden John that's found in the ancient ruins throughout Elden Ring. Is the statue of that guy with the big beard holding a tablet that has a tree on it. Um, perhaps he was, you know, uh, an Elden Lord in the time of the Crucible. We, we just don't know. Um, yeah. But I, I've always kind of thought that there has to have been because there's such a time gap. Placidus Axe is essentially the first Elden Lord in my mind of all life. So there has to have been things in the middle. And I think that this unnamed character we see in the story trailer could just be one of those. But the the fingers... <laughs> the, yeah. The, 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 the liars. The liars, yeah. Yeah, the, the fingers are the ones that supposedly gave Merica the seed and they so mm -hmm. so did the fingers guide the dragons too they must have right if, potentially if we, we now we now know that meter meter came before the elden beast apparently yeah uh, apparently she was the first vassal of his a uh, first vassal of the the greater will to arrive here so yeah and potentially maybe at that point they actually did have contact with the greater will we only know that it's you know, recently they haven't had contact with the Greater Will, so perhaps they were legitimately guiding uh, the dragons at that stage. Who knows? But yeah, you're right. We we get no evidence of the fingers at um, Fire Missoula and things like that. So it is tough. It is definitely tough to try and imagine what's going on there. Mm. Um, but I, I don't think it changes too much. I think we know that just the Elden Ring has been here for a long time. And there's been, as you say, a constitution every single time. There's been a god, there's been a set of rules, and there's been a lord to implement those rules. And even with the dragons, that was the case. Okay. What are, you, what are we thinking about the fingers, then, uh, specifically? Like, for example, we have we have this new lore with Mater. Meter. Meter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I keep calling it different things. Meter. Um, yeah. He... Uh, you know, she's the mother of, of the fingers. She drops down. She actually can talk to the greater will. And she talks to the greater will for some period of time. We don't know a period exactly. Of time. Yeah. And then, then the greater will abandons it. It's broken. It doesn't doesn't work. And she waits for more, more things. In the meantime, she births the other fingers. The other fingers, can they talk to the greater will? Because there is I'm... those other pieces of lore that talk about how they, they once wriggled with uh light they would be able they were they were vigorous yeah. they they could they, yeah. they talked to the people in the round table hold they were uh it it seemed to me like they were they were able to talk to the greater will at some point yeah yeah so it's definitely possible that they were able to and it's just meter that wasn't but there's also the possibility that they were just getting instructions from meter and they believed it was the greater will mm. this whole time um, it really calls into question the legitimacy of everything, that which is what Ymir says. At the end of the day, it is just Ymir's uh, view on things as well. But if Ymir's right and the fingers could never hear the greater will, because that's what he's essentially saying, right, when he says that Mararka's rule is based on rotten foundations, on a lie, because she was guided by fingers who themselves were not being guided correctly. So it calls into question everything that happens in the main <laughs> game because we're essentially guided by the two fingers for a long time as well. And they tell us what we believe to be the greater will's intent, that we are to kill, you know, the demigods and become the Elden Lord. But, and, now, and it really makes us ask, does the greater will even care about any of this anymore? Hmm. And all his vassals are just behaving as they think it should on its, on its behalf. And I really like those implications, to be honest. That Marika's whole entire rule is based on nothing, based on ramblings of misunderstood creatures. And yeah, there's definitely some fascinating implications to be made there if we review the whole story of the main game. But eventually but, the Elden Beast like crashed down and became the Elden Ring. I, I'm yeah. assuming that's still that's still a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I it just seems like the Mater has been added as the thing that came down first. Yes. Uh, which makes sense. If it's the scout or messenger of the Greater Will, it would be able to relay messages about, you know, our plane of existence back to the Greater Will. And then it sends down the Elden Beast slash Elden Ring in order to actually govern uh, the planet. Because obviously, you know, the Greater Will never does anything directly and the Elden Ring's its way of imposing its will upon this realm. So I think it still all makes sense. It's just adding a little bit new nuance to it. And I, I, I do one interesting Sorry, about the the greater will 
I've been I've been talking about this a lot in in different streams where the way that the greater will apparently it takes a long apparently the fingers think they can talk to the greater will you know they're like yes. it's just going to take them yes. a long time thousands uh, of years apparently yeah yeah, yeah it's going to take them a long time maybe it's it's in space one of the things i've been thinking about it's like it's actually in space it's in yes it, yes it, the and they're sending talk, they're sending a yeah they're like an antennae right sending yeah. a message across space yeah. yeah and the fingers talk through light they use light to speak um and they might be sending it at the speed of light and it's so far away in space and maybe it wasn't so far away and that's why they could talk to it more readily back in the past and that's why uh, messages between them get get take longer and longer to 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 arrive and that's one of the reasons why they can't do it there's this there's this um there's this uh in the book the selfish gene by richard dawkins i yeah. think he talks about a story uh a sci-fi story where aliens send down a machine to take over the earth or something like that and okay. but the aliens had to program the machine beforehand because they have to send it long periods of time and then it'll land on earth eventually and so the, by the time the machine gets here all it has is the instructions that were initially programmed into it it doesn't have the instructions of what they would want them to do now you know the aliens might have advanced it's been like thousands exactly. of years exactly yeah exactly it's, yeah um and so yeah. that's always hit me because that's a that's a metaphor for evolution that that uh dawkins was talking about in that book and so he's like well we're kind of like that machine like our genes are like that machine we only have our genes to to look into but those genes were programmed for a world that doesn't exist anymore and so we're ill suited yeah. to the world that currently exists because the genes are programmed to be effective in a world that that's long gone um and we're flying by the seat of our pants essentially yeah uh, on a genital i i agree and that that is kind of maybe what I wasn't getting across better. I think you're right in that the Elden Beast has come here to govern on behalf uh, of of the greater will, but it's just doing as it thinks the greater will would want it to, and they haven't got any direct contact with it. And this whole time in the base game, we thought that there was maybe some loose connection or guidance from the greater will somewhere yeah. via the fingers, but now maybe that's not even there anymore either. And we've everyone's actions including marcus have been dictated by these creatures that are just guessing now mm. what the greater will would want it's mm. very interesting i do think ymir's quest uh really undermines a lot of <laughs> um a lot of what the characters do in the main game um but yeah i think that they they obviously did you know communicate or, or came down with the greater will's instructions a long time ago meter and the elton beast i really but, like uh, ymir's quest line he's a, he's a yeah, really, it's interesting, excellent. It really interesting it's quest excellent line yeah it's excellent and uh yeah it, it just makes me question everything now definitely i really like his his whole yeah there's never ho any hope from the start all of them were defensive. yes the entire thing was broken <laughs> from the beginning yeah and he's like, and, you, and you ask him what can be done he's like <laughs> nothing <laughs> we're, we're finished yeah. we're finished we're finished bro like we're done it's, it was broken before you were even born <laughs> yeah it was uh yeah it's excellent uh it really is um but i do like that he kind of tries to relate it to what Mikla's is doing that he's trying to disconnect himself from his mother's mistakes in order to start something new and govern maybe as a god that's disconnected from the greater will right mm -hmm. because if you think about it what Mikla does it means he's a god by his own right and it will have nothing really to do necessarily with the elden ring or the greater will he is just a god um so i do like that kind of implication as well Okay, all right. Let's talk about the the horn scent and the omen because this is this is kind of interesting. Yeah. Why are the omen popping up? Do you have any new ideas as to why the omen are popping up in the lands between now that we have horn scent information? Yeah. So I think that while the Erd tree supplanted the crucible as the de facto power in the lands and the nexus of life, I think that. As I've said in my summary video, I don't think the Crucible was just one tree. I think the Crucible is an esoteric power that we can't necessarily see. And there's even a talisman called, um, <clears throat> I think it's called the Knot of All Talisman, of All Crucibles. Let me find it. Hold on. All Crucibles. Anyway, it talks about multiple Crucibles. Um, yeah, here we go. Talisman of all crucibles. And I'm now just thinking that 
the Crucible's powers haven't ceased to exist. Uh, whilst they might have lessened in the lands between where the Ur tree takes the kind of nexus focal point uh, for life and may well have been born from the Crucible, the Crucible's power isn't necessarily entirely depleted and thus it is able still to leak through. What would your thoughts be on why the Crucible still exists? Or at least its power still exists? Well, I've always been a Crucible is evolution guy. Uh, yeah. Like it's a, it's a metaphor for evolution. And I think that more now because um, the spirals and the double spirals that, they, that they're Mm -hmm. that are being associated with the crucible and the tower and the and the shadow tree are uh you know there's that one incantation that's like the, the spirals the double spirals go up and they reach the heavens eventually touching uh touching the gods yeah touching the gods yeah. um that's spiral of the double helix the crucibles yeah, are yeah. are you know the aspects of the crucible are aspects in which evolution can of evolution can, mm -hmm. can take take form mm -hmm. uh yeah as as civilization progresses, it it seems it's seen as as not good because they're like, okay, now we were this shape, we don't need to be other. We're shapes. reformed, yeah. We're we're a reformed in the part image of, of life. God, and this yeah, is yeah, it. We're, yeah. Yeah, this is the this is the real shape, and uh, and all the shapes that came before, yeah. bad. Um, one of the things that I was was curious about is, so if you attack the Empyrean Grandam, she says, um, a curse to Marika and all her children. The curse of the omen will 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 affect her progeny in the shape of the sacred beast is ire in the shape of the sacred beast ire, and like I've never heard the omen say, I mean sorry the horns that say the word omen. I didn't think they knew that word. I thought maybe that was just like a slur that that came up with. Yeah, that's that's more or less what I I I, uh, I believed as well. So you do you think that it is a curse then the crucible, the the omen? Sorry, you think the omen is a curse that's been bestowed upon them by. The people of the crucible no but it's just it's weird that she would use that term i really wish she had because, yeah, because yeah uh, it throws everything up in the air yeah th it's a fly in the uh, ointment there um it, so so it seems to me like she wouldn't curse her children to be omens because the the horn scent see omens as good they see the 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 horns and uh, as a mark of divinity as a sign of divinity uh and they wouldn't want that so I guess if they if they were cursing her and causing her children to be born like that, uh, maybe they would be doing because they know it would upset her. But is that it really? Like they're doing it to upset yeah. America, even though yeah, it, I mean it, you you can explain it away that way, but you're right, it's not not particularly satisfying. That yeah, I do wonder, or maybe it's just that. Yeah. So Smog and Morgat might have been born already by the time Mesmer puts everything to the torch, uh, since they're Godfrey's children. Yeah, I thought they would have definitely been alive by then because he knew Redan and presumably Morgan, uh, Morgoth and Mog are older than than uh, Redan. Yeah. Um, yeah. The curse of the omen shall strike thee down. Yeah. There's also a I don't ghost. Know. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's there's also a ghost uh, close to the beginning of the of the DLC that's like looking at trees and he's like, ah, your resentment. Uh, he's talking to like hanging bodies on the trees. Uh, that's the raw material from which I will surely forge a curse on the dastard Mesmer's head and on Merica's progeny all. And so it's like, are they actually able, like this ghost seems to think that they actually can curse them and specifically the children. But uh, if they are... It's too late. It's because too the late. Children, the children have been born. The yeah. children have been born. Mm. And, and, um, but does he mean in general the children of Merica as in the people that live under America's rule because remember yes Moore refers to himself as you know one of her brood right yes so so it could be that but but it specifically is not targeted because he said i will lay yeah. a curse on mesmer's head and oh, mesmer. okay so it's mesmer yeah so mesmer's yeah. already there he's already attacked the the place so however he's yeah. cursing them it's not can't working be, can't be yeah. omen related i don't think because yeah uh, maybe it's just the word omen you know i mean yeah. it's an unfortunate cho choice of words um but mm. omen is obviously just a word right. right so it could just be used in that re 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 that respect but <laughs> you're right it is an annoying choice of words it's an annoying choice of words yeah, you're yeah. right that's irritating it's, and it's hard for me just to ignore it i didn't realize that i think i had killed her before but i didn't know i didn't pick up on that um but yeah it could just be a, an omen in general but yeah, I think that more or less what you're saying is correct. Like I say, I, I argued this in my, my video as well, is that the portrayal of the Crucible as a tree 
you know, through Solaria's uh, tree and stuff is not literal. It's just a, a, you know, a way that people are able to express something that's intangible, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's why it's a spiral tree to the uh, to the horn scent as well, because I think the amber seal describes it as not just a spiral but a spiral tree. So we're we're it's just a an analogy for something that's hard to describe. So I agree that the crucible is a force. Yeah, yeah, like you say, evolution rather than an actual tree, which people have believed for a long time. Because it could have also been like a tree. tree. Like it could have also. Yeah, yeah, of course. I yeah, it definitely could also have been a tree for sure. Um, uh, but I th- I think its power is still some somehow present, and it does affect people. Yes. At, at the end of the day, it affects people that are not connected to the earth trees nexus of power. Right. Mm-hmm. Omen are people that are disconnected from it, and their souls don't return to it. So. Yeah, there's definitely a difficult conversation to be had there, but I think that the crucible just isn't completely supplanted like maybe people had thought before. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I guess I have to make a confession. I I think I think we we disagreed uh, for a while on whether America was involved on the night of the Black Knives, and I yeah, I, I yeah, think yeah. I think I was wrong. <laughs> oh, so you don't think she was involved? Then you're I don't... my you're, you're my camp. Okay. Okay. I don't. Th- I don't think she was involved anymore. I, I think I have. To, I have to switch. Hand- as much as I hate it, as much as I. <laughs> I, I loved the m- slandering America for years. For the years you're at that the I front with, could. <laughs> with the placards. Yeah, yeah. What? So what changed your mind? I'm interested in the DLC. What changed your mind? To be honest? <sighs> it makes more narrative sense if she actually was brought to the brink and shattered the Elden Ring now, because. So, now because we know. Now the we thematics know, of yeah. yeah it's the thema- it makes thematic yeah, sense I agree. to me now yeah yeah we, we, i give you on it we have marika uh and w- what do we think she is she's a shaman she was she was potted she came out as a saint maybe uh, whatever the reason she got to be a god uh i'm not i'm not exactly sure how the mechanics of how she did it but she got to be a god uh and in you know she she bestows her little tree to the village where there's no one left to save there's no one left to yes. heal, and everyone's gone. Yeah, um, she puts her her, crucif- her tree sentinels there to protect the village, and she puts a little a little tree there, giving it grace without order. Um, and then then she attacks. She like destroys the people that initially destroyed her 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 people, and then her whole thing is she's Marika the Eternal. You know, Miyazaki talks about interviews how yeah. the tree is supposed to be eternal. It's supposed to be something that that was intended to be eternal but can't be eternal because it's a living thing and it's, it's destined to die. She removes the rune of death from the Elden Ring to keep her children from dying, to keep the, the demigods from dying. Uh, she calls the demigods my beloved at one in one, my beloved children, I think, in one of her dialogues. Um, so she cares about her children, even if even if she's, you know, mistreated. Pretty firm. Them. Yeah, pretty firm mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, and then she gets betrayed by Newman, you know, the, the, maybe the last of the Newman, like the black knife assassins. Let's assume that yep. they actually are Newman. Let's assume that that's yep. the case. She's betrayed yep. by Newman and Ronnie and Rikard, and they kill her golden child. Like the one child that wasn't cursed, no omen horns, no, no, no Michael yep. and Melania and curses. A, hero- a heroic character who brought the dragons and Lindell people together through his friendship yeah, and, and the, things like that. The yep. only one that has like nothing wrong with him. Uh, and yet you can argue for maybe uh, uh, Radon, I suppose. But yep. um, but th- this, I, th- I, th- I think this was her favorite. And I think they say that that one piece of evidence that we both used about... Uh, there was like a pre-release from article. Bandai Namco yeah. article yeah. that talked about what the events before the shattering. And in it, she says that nothing was more costly to her than the death of Godwin the Golden. And so like if we, we take that for real. Uh, it's just like, legit. It's just, there's no makes sense. wordplay there. Yeah. It, it just, just makes, yeah, it it just makes sense. Yeah. It, it broke her. Yeah. And, and, and so she's, uh, you see like the grief of it. Like she's hammering on the Elden Ring, like just destroying yeah, everything that she's, that exactly. she's built. Yeah. It makes, it makes raw visceral sense to me. Like forget about the logic of it. And then finally it breaks and she collapses onto the ground and like she's, her, her body's shattered from, from shattering the ring itself because they're connected. Um, and she is, and she like you can see her kind of like touching the pillar where the Elden Ring was, uh, and she's just broken, like she's done. 
Uh, yep, she spent all of this time trying to keep everything together, keep everything for alive, uh, being and eternal. Son, yeah. And it's her, her, the one son that wasn't cursed yeah. <laughs> gets torn taken down, from her. Torn, torn down and torn down in the most horrific way possible. Yeah. yeah. And humiliated in, in this way, like like becoming, uh, you know, prince A of zombie. death. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, left to rot underneath the the trees, of the, the roots of the earth tree. Yeah. Just yeah. for someone's Machiavellian purposes. Yep. Yeah. Totally agree. Yep. Yeah. And um, it's just, yeah, I, I think it just always makes thematic sense that she's just, she does it just because she's had enough and it's time for something else to take its place. And that's why that dialogue of her telling her demigod children that, you know, you're going to have to mm-hmm. become a god or a lord. You know, it's, it's up to you guys. And yeah. that's her preparing yeah. them because she's going to... She's going to do it. She's reset gonna it. She's going to reset, she's gonna reset it all. And it's up to them now who replaces them. She wants something to replace them. And when she chooses us and directs us and she gets Hugh to build a tarnished, a weapon that'll kill a god, I think she's wanting rid of uh, Radigan and the Elden Beast. And after that point, it doesn't matter to her, essentially. That's mm-hmm. always been my kind of interpretation of it. I actually don't think she's even like alive in the strictest sense no no she, she's point. she's gone at that point but yeah. when she set when she sets up hugh in advance of things um she's she's preparing a tarnish to be able to do yeah it's a backup plan bl- to do the what? final blow to do the final blow yeah yeah i think she probably wanted one of her demigod children's to to inherit the the yep. the yep what the the order but if they can't if they can't do it she she had a backup plan with hugh and the tarnished and and uh melina yep and she knew that the Tarnish would have to face uh, Radigan and uh, the Elden Beast, so they needed the appropriate weapon. Yep. No, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you, you, you yeah, came, came around. around. I came, I came around. Glad. It know. took us a while, guys. It took us a while. We've, <laughs> I'm pretty sure we've discussed it on every podcast that I've been on. That's great, man. I'm, I'm glad. Glad you're one of us now. One yeah. Of us. Yeah. America Glazer. That's great. I'm. Yeah, God damn it. <laughs> this is this is almost as bad as having to to uh, to uh, be a Ronnie supporter. Never though. No, never. No, no, no. no. I saw, I saw your tweets about that. <laughs> so, so good. What uh, with with the new the DLC in mind? Like, what is your kind of thoughts towards all of the endings now? What would be your favorite choice? So, I have a problem with Gold Mask's ending because it's the the rune of perfect order, and I was explaining this in in a in a stream where. Yeah. I don't think you can have perfect order. Like the whole point of all of Miyazaki's games is that you actually it, exact, it doesn't work. It's a fu- it's a it's a very interesting choice of words. Perfect order, definitely. Yeah. And so, like, so Gold Mask correctly identifies a problem with the Golden Order, and he's like, let's let's get rid of that problem, and then it'll be perfect. But like, that's just not any different than anything else that we've seen in any of Miyazaki's games, including Marika's Rule. It's like, if we just get rid of the death. <laughs> and then my my rule will be perfect and eternal. If we just get rid of this, then it'll be perfect and eternal. If we just uh, keep linking the fire, then the dark never comes, and and it's it, exactly. it's good. It's good. Yeah. So like gold mass ending, I think is just not a good ending because it's a trap. There, there can, you can't make a perfect order, and the fact that he thinks that he did it is a problem. <laughs> but it's because he's looked at it from a mathematical point of view, and he's gone, yeah, I've balanced that equation, spot yeah. on. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but without looking at the absolute reality of it, because perfect order is just the same order as the golden order, mm-hmm. except there's no gods, right? It's just it's more or less exactly the same. So yeah, it's gonna have the same problems. Uh, so with that in mind, what would you choose? Frenzied flame. What would I choose now? No, because fl- frenzied flame. I think I think people get caught up with frenzied flame <laughs> being called a, a flame of chaos, and I don't think it's the same kind of chaos that is shown in other things. No. Like people think it's an order chaos dynamic. It's like oh, when the order's no. bad, burn it down, and then something new can be burnt built. From no, it's, the ashes. Ni- it's nihilism. It's basically yeah. just removing everything. Yeah, uh, yeah. life Fren- itself. Yeah. Yeah, frenzied flame is the conclusion that life is the problem, not the current order, not not and a the, even order. existing. Yeah, yeah existing, even existing is the problem, is and bad. everybody yeah. needs to die forever, and yeah. nothing should ever grow again. Kind of kind yeah. of philosophy. So no, I wouldn't go with the frenzied flame. No. I don't think there's good choices. I'm a Ymir supporter. I'm like he's he's right. He's spitting facts. It was broken. Let, from the let start. him become a mother. Let, <laughs> let become him become the, a new mar- finger mother. mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to his little boy, his little uh, his little kid fingers. Yuri, I think I'm. <laughs> I think Yuri. I think a uh, Yuri. That's <laughs> Wait, see when I went into that and he said, "Watch your step, uh, so you don't stand to the little boy." I was like, "What is he talking about?" I looked around. It took me so long. <laughs> it took me so long. To to... 
what is he talking about? Weird, weird guy, but great character. I even took the invisibility torch, I think, and like wandered around the, the <laughs> cathedral trying to find uh, what little boy yeah, was talking about. Because I, I walked around as well. I was like, did I miss like a dialogue? I was like, I don't understand. What, what is this guy <laughs> on about? Great, great stuff. I, I think you're right. There's no perfect ending. And that is the point with the Elden Ring in general. Right. But I think I would choose uh, those who live in death one. That was mm. the first one I chose. Mm -hmm. And I still think that's the one I would choose because it's not perfect either, but you're giving a chance to those that have been excluded up till this point. I think right. is what I would go with. Right. Still issues with that, obviously, as, as well, but still. <laughs> okay, I think we covered pretty much everything that uh, that I wanted to. It, was, there, was there any interesting topics that you've been thinking about lately? Uh, no, I, I, I we've kind of covered everything I wanted as well. The shrouding thing's the one that's been on my mind a lot as well. But it's glad it's good to talk it out with you and that you're coming to a similar conclusion about it happening after kind of Mesmer's time. And listening to you discuss the vow on stream changed my mind on that as well. So I'm looking forward to revisiting that. But I think those are the big questions so far. And I'm I'm looking forward to people, you know, covering it in, in content videos, you know, myself included. But yeah, I think we discussed everything I wanted to as well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the future of the, the the DLC didn't give me the explicit answers I was I was hoping for. Um Elden Ring continuously bucks my my expectations with with what they reveal because I I think I've got a pretty good understanding of like even Armored Core, you know. So when Armored Core came out it's like, "Oh, I'm not an idiot. Elden Ring's just hard." <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's 100% 100%. You you're so right. And, and the way that Elden Ring kind of drip feeds these cosmic elements into the game, I think is genius because they're done in a way that it, it's from the perspective of how we'd actually understand it if that was our real world, mm. as in we don't understand it. We just have these strange cosmic elements that the humans in the world try to make sense of and incorporate into their religions, but we're never going to know the truth of it. We're never going to know the truth of the outer gods or the greater will or the fingers and how they communicate. So you're right. It, it constantly bucks expectations. There's never going to be a, a straight answer. And do you think that the DLC then just introduced essentially new questions rather I, than answering any? I think I think I need more time to. to I, I think they did Percolate, probably. Yeah. They, they reinter they recontextualized a lot of things, and that's causing. Uh, that's questions. exactly exactly right. How I would I would put it. They added more, recontextualized some things and bridged some gaps, but nothing was explicitly answered. I would say. Y yeah, this is this is more than any of the other ones. This is the one he he wants people to speculate on. Like he wants you to come oh, up. Oh yeah. He wants you to go through 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 circumstantial evidence, and not just not proof. You're not going to get proof for anything. Exactly. All you're exactly. going to do is be able to get circumstantial evidence and and try and put th two or three of those in a line and get to a point, and then like, all right, this is what I'm going to have be, to. This I'd is be, where I'd I'm be happy do. with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Bella, that like Bella. And, yeah exactly and that vow he wants us talking about that vow because there's no details of what it actually said mm -hmm. in the vow so yeah there's things like that definitely um but the dragons i think got a lot of closure about you know Balin and placidus acts it was and so cool the too. dragon dragon <laughs> communion stuff that's that's great you know, now we know why the banished knights are walking around far Missoula using dragon communion incantations uh, because i thought that was initially offensive to dragons when it turns out no, it's Placidus Axe's orders. Yeah. And so they are they are knights of Placidus and, Axe, right? And all of the dragons that we we uh, take the hearts from, they're Bale's descendants. They're like, all right, yeah. kill all of Bale's descendants. It's like, okay, yeah, that, that makes it, sense. It adds so much more because before Dragon Communion was just isolated, right? It was just these group of people that wanted power of dragons, hunting dragons. But now we know it's it's on Placidus Axe's orders. It's, that's a great. That's a really nice bit of closure, I think, but, for sure. By the way, did. You, Bale? Did you do you like Bale? Uh, oh my god, I yes, love a tremendous, Bale's boss tremendous fight. fight. Yeah, yeah. I just remember partway through the fight with him, listening to the amazing soundtrack and uh, Egon screaming in my ear, and I was like, "Fucking hell!" This is <laughs> so, sorry, this is amazing. Like that is just such a good fight. Curse um, just, you, Bale! <laughs> 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 for every drop of my bang. Yeah, it's just uh, <laughs> with a I, hail of harpoons. Like uh, <laughs> it was amazing. I wasn't going to to summon Egon. But people in chat were so persistent, like stop, stop it, stop spoiling me th about things. I don't want to. I want to see. I, I, but but I usually don't summon them. Like no, Same. they were they're Same. like they were so many and so insistent. Fine, I'll I'll summon him. And so I summoned him the first few times that I was that I was fighting him, and I was like, all right, well I'll stop now so I can fight him on my own. But then like it was just not the same. 
the music it's, didn't it's sound right. It's part of the soundtrack. Yeah, it's the part music of the didn't sound yeah. right. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, have to, I have to bring him. I have to get this man his revenge. I, I think it's one of the best bosses of all time. I'm not saying it's the most balanced or anything like that, but I think it's just, it just felt so good. And stage two, mm-hmm. you, you think you're fighting this wounded dragon. He's hopping around, breathing fire. You're like, okay. And then stage two, he opens his wings and lightning comes down. He flies yeah. into the sky and he's firing lightning. You're like, what on earth is going on? Yeah, I think they've topped themselves super, with dragons. I, absolutely think, super. I think we've reached dragon peak. That's like, dragon peak. Yeah. We, we will never have a better dragon in, in, in from software games. I oh, think we've, we've hit the wall. There's no way it can get better than yeah. this absolutely legendary fight absolutely legendary and i saved it to the end of my first playthrough and i just yeah had a great time with it just everything i'd want from a dragon fight and it didn't feel that frustrating he's done he's got a lot of you know health and he has a lot of damage but i don't think he's a particularly frustrating or unfair fight mm-hmm. uh, i think mechanically he felt great so yeah great fight just were loved there, it were there any fights you, you thought didn't feel uh great and, and you didn't like <sighs> see i I think i didn't really i think again i just used the scattered tree fragments well that like i was basically able just to kind of face plant every single fight you know i just go and do a lot of damage and and get through it the one that really stood out to me as annoying was the ancient dragon before oh Um, my god that it drove me meant crazy that because i was fighting him on foot and i presume you were the same where it would go backwards and catch you when you're trying Mm -hmm. to roll under his feet Mm -hmm. my god that was so irritating I can't um, stand ancient dragons in general, and this one was the worst. That oh, they it was so bad. <laughs> it, it was it was really bad, wasn't it? Uh, I don't understand how they like. I really like the normal dragons. It's like fighting a monster hunter. Yeah, monster. they're great. They, yeah, they, they are they, great. They, they, it's a very it's a very obvious how you fight them. Even the zombie ones that they came out in the DLC, they had a bunch of new moves. I was like, I'm fine with them. They're great. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the yeah. ancient dragons, you can't get to their head. Their heads are always way up in the air. Tiny little. They've got a tiny little pea head. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, oh. it, it's tiny and you know it does more damage so it's like maybe they want me to hit it but i can't i can't get to it and so the the they've got their legs and i'm over here toe nibbling for like 10 minutes trying the to same. get yeah get one of these down it's and then awful. he insta kills you and then he insta kills you yeah. oh god that was that was that was the worst um but actual bosses i didn't mind any of them i i definitely see people's complaints about gaius and i think i'll try him again differently i don't know i think every build i've used is more or less used magic in some capacity so i've been able to range him a little bit what about you did you find any difficult or annoying no i actually learned guys timing to his charge pretty quickly yeah uh, but then i started like using the deflect tier like around that point oh okay and okay. then i was like oh i just block everything like i don't need to uh, See, with this tiny like medium shield i don't need to do anything i just block everything and gaius <laughs> was just went down real fast everything went down real fast i love the deflect here i uh, see i watched you play and i'm never i've for a long time i've never been a shield guy i'm a dodge and hit guy but watching you play and killing radan with that parry setup it really i really want to do like a shield and and sword a sword and board build you really made it look viable i guess that's what's really good about the dlc adding that deflect here definitely um, I really enjoyed Radon. I, I know. I, I, I know, know you, the, you you did it in a really good way. I think. I, I think it looked very enjoyable the way you were fighting him. Definitely. Yeah. It's yeah. satisfying. The, mo- you, the moment you, I knew you I could parry him, it's like, oh, this is great. It's like great. Yeah. Uh, deflect deflecting some things and parrying some things. And like I, fe- I <laughs> yeah. felt very satisfied with my Radon kill. Yeah, and um, you know, but the way I killed him was a lot messier. But I watched your your streams, and it was very satisfying to watch. Uh, you obviously knew his his move set very well, and it was obviously just a matter of time for all of us watching you. And uh, yeah, getting that parry kill on him was yeah, like, it was very <laughs> satisfying to watch you, uh, even more so than actually fighting him. I actually don't think he's that bad a boss. I think he was just a little bit overtuned pre-release. Like his his light waves were obscene pre-release. Like they were just they Did were they just nerf the, the light waves. I, th- I believe so yeah they were just they were they were huh they were so bad there was there was ones that would just insta kill me and the other thing was that three hit combo i think scott june br- brought it up is that the, it would um where he kind of brings his swords together and then he does the final ones who he spreads his swords out in front of himself that that every one of those hits would stagger you and you wouldn't be able to roll out of it <laughs> it was it was so irritating and it would be an insta kill it was extremely irritating extremely irritating but I think he's a good boss. I think he's he's extremely challenging. Um, but I wouldn't want anything less for the final boss of the DLC. Yeah, I, I enjoyed him. The, I, I get why yeah, some you had people a great are time, not, man. Not, you had a great time, I could tell. <laughs> I get why some people might not like the light show part of it. Um, but it was fine. <laughs> it was cinematic. <laughs> it was cinematic. It, was, it definitely was cinematic. 
Did you uh, did you like um, like the Patrescent Night? It's another one that people say they don't like. Did you like that one? I'd put him at the bottom, but I didn't hate him. Like I put him yeah, at, he, at the bottom of I, my he's, list. He probably, he's a mid boss, I think, but I don't hate him. I thought he was fine. I really like the Sunflower. I don't think a lot of people like that one. Oh, I, I love really the Sunflower. Enjoy. He's I amazing. Love the sc- what a cool boss! And just coming back to life three times. I just thought it was a lot of fun. It's, it's not. It too was difficult. clever. It was clever. It is. Yeah, I thought it was. Cr- I thought it was great. That was definitely one of my favorite ones. I liked how he moved. I liked how I liked how he did yeah, his attacks. Uh, so he was unique. Te- telegraphed, and then you kill him three times, and if you if you he gets weaker every time. It was really fun. And then I fought him on my Fire Knight build again later on, and he died yeah. immediately. It was so <laughs> shocking how much damage Fire does to him. <laughs> oh man, yeah, he's not got a lot of health. I thought he was a great boss. I really. He's probably my favorite aside from. Rolana, I like as well. I think those are probably my two favorite ones, but I like them all. I really like Lion Dance. I think I think the song on oh, Lion it's a great Dance, dance. Yeah, yeah, it's so great, great good. I, I, it's such a creative. Bo- who thinks of this stuff? Like who thinks of Lion Dance as a, as, a, anim- as a major boss? The animations as well, where it like twists into the air mm-hmm. and unleashes its lightning. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. the bosses were all highlights. I love his little bitey. He's like the the, the hands are like chomping on, yeah. on the thing. It's like yeah. right, I'm about to it's, bite it's you. Coming, a, coming uh, yeah. for you. It's so yeah. fun. He's such a fun but, boss. Yeah, he's excellent. He is excellent. Definitely one of my favorites. Lion Dancer, Rolana, and Sunflower are probably my favorites. I'd say they were they were excellent. All excellent boss fights. Did you feel like some of them could have used some cutscenes that they didn't get? Uh, I think yeah, I definitely think so. I think Rolana was a bit kind of just. There. She's a really cool boss, but you just walk in and she's like, oh, she's just there. Just Rolana, sister of Renala, just there. I think um, I would have also liked Radon to have some dialogue, like at least a, a word, a, a couple. Yeah, I do think that's disappointing, um, especially for big Radon fans. That was a big moment for them, you it know, finally seeing Prime Radon. Finally him talk. Anything. Like that was one of the main things I, I, people wanted for Prime Radon is so that he'd actually say something. Yeah, because he's obviously like this intelligent guy. He's not just like a big bruiser. But every time we've fought him, he's just been a big bruiser. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it, yeah, it's definitely annoying. But yeah, I think that is a legit criticism is the cinematics thing. And like Gaius, you just walk into his arena and he charges at you from miles away. Um, I like the way the, the, the sunflower is done, so, uh, the avatar. It's just kind of, you go in and it's not doing anything. You walk closer to it, then it starts to animate. I think that's fine. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I definitely definitely could be more. But overall, I was very happy with the DLC, especially the bosses. What about Legacy Dungeon type thing? What what did you think of them? Uh, Belly Rat's one of my favorites. I think that's really great. I mean, it's not huge, but um, I think it's a really great dungeon with nice verticality and, and things to explore. Um, Ensis was a bit basic. Um, felt like a kind of fort that you'd find in the lands between. You yeah, know? that's not that's not even a real... I don't think... I would consider that like an actual yeah, legacy yeah. dungeon. That's like a Morn Castle. I agree. Like, it's like a castle. Manor. Yeah, yeah. I I liked. Uh, obviously, the Black Keep's an, uh, a great legacy dungeon, connecting to so many different levels and layers. Um, and I think that's it. Apart from Midras Mance, which is again just kind of a bit, bit small. Um, yeah, yeah. Shadow Keep I, think I did good. like a lot. I, I did like a Shadow. I think it probably is my favorite. It's like very complex, and there's, yeah, there's it, multiple ways to get into it. Down multiple yeah. places uh, i like doing invasions and it's it's a great place to invade in in all of its different levels it's so so much fun and then it's like two things connected at once because then there's the whole uh the specimen church preservation area and that's that's huge like that's a it's like what seven yeah. eight story tall it's uh, like lothric a bit from D- <laughs> ds3 right with the grand mm. library in the middle of it and stuff like that yeah it's what it reminded me of the ds3 kind of level design philosophy and that that's a good thing definitely mm-hmm. in my opinion i, I thought it was great and one of my only criticism was I felt there wasn't enough minor dungeons. Yeah. Uh, you know? And I know people complained about them, but I still wish there'd been more. Uh, I think they took the criticism of the legacy, of the minor dungeons too hot, too hard. And the only, I think there's only like nine, maybe ten. And they made them minor dungeons. They made them nice and lengthy. And they, they're like great. They, though. Oh, they are great. They're huge. They, they are absolutely great. <laughs> they are, they are, they're incredible and lots of things to explore and lots of secrets, things to find. I didn't find Black Knight Commander Andreas's Ashes for ages in that first dungeon. Didn't mm-hmm. find them for absolute ages. But um, I just wish there'd been more. I definitely, I liked exploring the areas, but I always like exploring an area and then finding a dungeon and it kind of caps off i've always area. been a mini dungeon supporter yeah i've always me too. Yeah. I, I like them i don't know why people don't like them so much oh yeah, it's, it's repetitive it's a repetitive content it's a nice little break between things man i exactly can, I can go in there and like little just, mini just, boss just chill get try, try out your build explore a little bit find some hidden walls yeah, yeah. fun uh, 
I'm a Chalice Dungeon enjoyer, so I, 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 guess. I was about to say that as well. <laughs> I'm a big Chalice Dungeon guy. Uh, I love them. So maybe we're just wired differently. Yeah, we're built differently. Um, so I was a little disappointed in the minor dungeon. That was my that at launch at pre-release when I was talking to a couple of other guys. That was the main thing. I was like, I just wish there was more <laughs> minor. I just wish there was guys, more minor. Did you like, guys find any? I, I can't find them all. Where are they? <laughs> where? Are, well, because like Carillion Coast, it's only got the fissure. And I was like, there's got to be a, a minor dungeon here somewhere. Yeah. There's not a single minor dungeon in Carillion Coast, which is it, disappointing. In Karen's uh, Hidden Grave, I was like, there has to be something else here. Like there's not, there's, there's a minor dungeon. There's but a there's jail. No, yeah. But yeah. there's nothing else. Like it's like this whole place and there's no, this, this cool red area and there's not a single yeah. other thing here. Exactly. Uh, and how much better it all would have felt if there was one more minor dungeon in each area. Yeah. That would have, that would have picked up a little bit in my opinion. Yeah. That was my main Who's Charon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you, bro? <laughs> uh, yeah yeah that that's my only complaint really about the dlc but aside from that i loved everything else definitely i kind of liked raw ruins um because it's not a legacy dungeon yeah it's but like, it's a, like long... a legacy dungeon yeah. for torrent it's like a torrent yeah. legacy dungeon it's complex it's lengthy definitely it's, it's, it's got a lot of places you can go to it's about as long as a legacy dungeon but it's meant to be navigated with torrent it's like experimental yeah. it's very experimental i, I like i it. think i think you're right i think they nailed that it's almost like a Dark Souls level, almost. It's almost like a full intertwining... Yeah, I think that's... De it was definitely... You're right, when I think about it in reflection, it's like a long legacy dungeon that meshes with an open world. It's great, actually. It's interesting that it you mentioned great. Dark Souls because Rom uh, Romina was very much like a Dark Souls boss to me. Like, her attacks are, are very telegraphed and slow, and... and she was I like easiest. him. I like she her. She was the so do i i like her as well but she was the easiest wasn't she yeah she's do, very do you easy. not agree with that yeah she's yeah, very, she's she's very easy but she's but i think she's the easiest because she's the closest to an older design of boss like uh, yeah <laughs> yeah she's, and she's, she's almost too fair she's she's, she's doing these two she's doing these very fair slow moves and we're used to yeah just flying all over the place yeah, yeah I, I it agree. was the one that it was easiest for me to get into the dance with uh Same. the interplay yeah. i'm like oh yeah i'm over here now i'm over here now you're dodging over here now i get to do attack it's like very smooth it's like oh yeah that's how how combat used to flow back in dark souls <laughs> one is that it is that all she's got <laughs> yeah. no i yeah i liked her a lot and her design and stuff i but we were almost overpowered for her now as a tarnished and elden ring for mm -hmm. this dark souls boss mm -hmm. um but yeah, I liked her a lot as well. I still think she was a great boss. And she's like one of the three required, right? Mesmer, yes. Romina, and Rad Radan. What a, power, what a power spike that would be after. <laughs> Facing Romina straight after. Uh, Radan straight after Romina. Mesmer, by the way, is an incredible boss. Really, He's a great boss. Yeah, really great, fun. Great boss. All rounder uh, boss. Great, great level of difficulty. Not too difficult, but also not easy. Um, incredible move set and stage two just takes it to the next level full cinematics yeah there's nothing you can complain about there was there any uh weapons or spells that you thought were really cool yeah so i used a uh, mesmer's uh, spear a lot in my first playthrough and see using it on the back of torn and throwing it um at like all the grave birds and stuff man that was so fun what a great time i had with the uh, with that um and on my second playthrough i used two of the the great katanas i used the uh, one that um the man dragon, dragon drops ancient man yeah, dragon the, man yeah <laughs> and, uh, and the other one that's dropped by the mausoleum character like rakashas or something can't remember mm -hmm. exactly what it's called mm -hmm. um and they were excellent i love the i love the great katanas i think they're the big winners from the new weapons like the move set is just so good if you two-handed, um, it works exactly like a katana from Monster Hunter World. Like it I, has I saw your I saw your tweet about that. Yeah, um, I'm not like obviously a big player of Monster Hunter, but I think that's a really nice homage. Yeah, or, yeah, it's it's, uh, yeah, you it's really nice. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get my friends that that I'm interested in getting them to play Monster Hunter to try the katana. It's like it's like this, but but with big monsters <laughs> all, all over the place. So basically the yeah. same. <laughs> um, like like a lot of other people, I also use the uh, Blood Fiend arm because it's quite broken at the moment. I don't know if you've seen how powerful it is. I think it's nerfed now. I think they... It's, well, sorry, yeah, it was it was, it was was over, overpowered. Um, it was okay. I, it's okay. Um, and obviously I used the Smith script Great Tamer. That was fun as well. Um, my favourite from the the preview that I got to do before launch. What about yourself? What weapons did you invest in? First first time I played through it, I uh, 
went with my carrion build and I wanted to keep a Macarian. So I was looking for, uh, you know, I, I switched around a lot. I went to the Rilana swords because she's got a nice carrion sword. Oh, yeah. I, I picked up Milady because it's found in a carrion build. And it's like, it counts. It counts. It's on theme. Don't <laughs> don't judge me. And then uh, uh, then I found Carrion Sovereignty, the Yash of War. It's just so strong. It was so incredibly strong. It's like... It was like doing what half one's carrying so what one's that? Is, oh, that's the one that spends. Is that the one that spends? Yes, round? it's the one that spends. Yeah, right. yeah, it's, yeah, it's Rolana's yeah. move that she uses yeah, in, the, so in, the, in the fight. Yeah, it's so, so much fun to use. Yeah. I, I, was, I was killing everything. I was I was like taking quarters of health from bosses. The the, the pig died so fast, thanks to thanks to that the um, <laughs> the pig, <laughs> the, the hippopotamus thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the um, and then it's it's amazing for PvP. People don't expect that swing yet. They don't know. They don't know what's coming, and it does so much damage. You can really just almost one shot people. It's uh, and they so finally much got fun. used to your carrying piercer. And now you're going to be using that instead <laughs> yeah. to mix up. Yeah, I saw you using Milady. Did you you put um you put an ash? Did you put an ash war in it? Yeah, carrying sovereignty. Oh, carrying. Oh, of course, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that change and that changes it to magic. Uh, the magic magic one. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Oh, very nice. Nice. Yeah, it's I a do, cool weapon. I I definitely need to try that. I do have a problem with it that that like ah. Uh, it bothers me so much. It makes me think I might have something wrong with me. Like uh, I might have, I might have some some condition that I'm not aware of, because <laughs> okay. um, I can't I can't use the milady. It it bothers me so much that it's not actually a carrying thing. It's not on it's not on brand. Like it's 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 so bothersome that I can't use carrying sovereignty on one of the weapons uh, that's found in castle enses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. on on an actual carrying sword with a glintstone. Like the carrion straight sword is literally my favorite weapon. I love it, but it sucks. Not, its damage sucks. Its quality It it's does. A, <laughs> it's so bad, but its move set is nice and it looks so pretty, and I can't put carrion sovereignty on it. And even its move carrion grandeur is not as good as it would be if I just put carrion grandeur on something else because it scales with magic. Uh and so like if it's magic infused, it does more damage even if it was just a little dagger. Uh, it's just, it's so irritating to me that I can't use carrying sovereignty on my carrying I, straight I sword. I might do a whole video on it just to, just to, justify it, just to, yeah. uh, just express, express this autistic rage I have over the situation. <laughs> I think, I think you're a good man. You find it in cast lenses. Let's just say lore wise. Let's just say lore wise that it's, yeah. That's, that's a carrying weapon. It's a carrying no. weapon. Clearly. And when it, say, when it says, when it says, when it says milady, it's talking about Rolana. So, you know. The world works, lines works, up. Works for it me. All lines up. <laughs> it works yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need to try your your um, your builds that you do, the shield and magic type builds. Uh, I'm not a shield guy, but you made it look really good. It's so very I need fun. To try it. It's very yeah, fun. Yeah, I need to try it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to be mindful of your time. We're about to hit two hours, and I'm running out of topics. So I think we'll call it a day. All right, man. That's uh, been great chat. Yeah, thank you very much for coming, Smotown. Been my pleasure, and I'm always delighted to come on whenever you want me. Give me a shout. This has been the Yggdrasil Podcast. Thank you all very much for listening.